Guys, guess what? Meet the Mets. Meet the Mets. Listening to the Shane Sons Podcast with your hosts, Keith and Keyshawn Diaz. Que lo que que la que hay, mi gente, mi gente, mi gente. What's up, baby brother? We back. Vacation's we are over. back. Yes, sir. Baseball is in full swing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Happy to be back. Happy, Happy to be back. back. Again, you know, I just wish that these games counted. So. So like, well, oh, <laughs> apparently to the to the president of baseball operations, nothing matters. So, you know what I'm saying? We should just stop watching. You know what I'm saying? Just wait till the 28th. That's when the real thing kind of begins. But oh, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Ladies and gentlemen, your two favorite brothers in Metland are back. Um, it is a pleasure. It's been a while. We've been honestly it's spring training, right? Yeah. I'm sorry. The whole game of the content world is to give you content, right? I'm sorry. We can only do so much. We ain't going to bullshit you guys with just spring training highlights. And it just, we are here to keep it real with y'all. What in the world are we going to talk about with guys who could get cut in about two weeks? Right? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to go back and forth over like the last bubble spot on the (laughs) rumble ponies. Like I'm not, we're not doing that. So I'm saying like some people could do that and I will gladly watch and inform myself. But I'm not talking about like random person who's gonna pitch for the Pirates in five years and throw a shutout against the Mets. Like we're not we're not doing that. Right? It's funny because like it's I'm sitting there watching a lot of these highlights and I'm like, man, this looks interesting. Man, this looks interesting. Right. Not gonna matter though. Just not. It's just not. Honestly, like it, it. I was you know just to bring him up. Nate Lavender looked amazing. Yeah, he looked did. Awesome. Yeah. Looked awesome. I was like, this looks awesome. Amazing. Interesting. Right back to minor league camp. Good thing, though. You know what I'm saying? Good that eventually he will be up. But, I mean, we cannot continue to bullshit ourselves, people. Like, you know, we just, Shane Sun's not doing that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think, I think spring training matters when you're looking at, you know, trying to decipher which player should start at a position. Right. You know, winning jobs and, and stuff like that and also seeing – what you got out of the younger guys, it also helps. Like, it's a yeah. growing experience for a lot of guys like Alvi and stuff like that. To oh, be yeah. a mentor to oh, a lot yeah. of the younger guys and stuff like that. I think um, that's what's great about spring training, getting in the groove and shit like that. But, like, yo, we not we not going <laughs> to analyze, like, what was that one guy? There was there was this one, I think he was a middle infielder um, playing for the Mets right now. I forgot. It's not Zach Short. It's another guy. But Glacius? Swing. No, he has. Oh, a oh, oh. Uh, um, batter, uh, Bannon. 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 Yeah. And we had, we saw him hit a fly ball, and then he had a rope, I think. It was a it was a fly or something. Haven't heard his name since. They, they, but in the they, moment, we were like, whoa. Like, oh. They sent him to the minor league camp. They said, yeah. oh, you're so good. We're not going to see any more of you. Yeah. You know like. What I'm so you gotta take it with a grain of salt, right? Oh, 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 we in here, we in here. Look at look at our resident homeboy, Jimbo Gang Gang. Jimbo, hold on, let's get Jimbo in here, man. I'm gonna get Jimbo to invite Jimbo's gonna join us. If you are available, Jimbo, I'm gonna make sure you get up in here, Papa. You know what I'm saying? Because we miss you. Shout out DVD, gang gang. DVD I see you. Shout out, yes, sir. So yo, know, DVD, after this show, I will be on MLB the show with you, Papa. So please, you know what I'm saying? Give it give me about an hour or so and I will be there. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to all my MLB the show players. My brother is boycotting this year because you know they didn't fix franchise mode, which I respect because franchise mode has been constantly, constantly ignored. So yeah. I would love franchise mode to be back to where it needs to be. I am a Diamond Dynasty player, but you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. We understand. You know what I'm saying? It is, you know, I get it. Franchise mode, though, and baseball games can turn into some of the most beautiful, beautiful time consuming things. And they just continuously ignore it. It would be dope if we had like an online dynasty thing. Yeah, we used to do it in each other's rooms all the time. I used to go to so your room, bring my controller. You know what I'm saying? We used to have wars with the with the Cleveland Guardians. Oh, you know, you were. 
you were notorious <laughs> in drafting um Maglio Ordonez. You Maglio you always fine. used to draft um 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 triple crown when a dude just retired. Oh my god, uh, Miguel Cabrera. Oh yeah, Miguel. You always draft him. Shout out Brandon, my guy Brandon. We're gonna be drafting Brandon. Now, Brandon. Do not forget, Papa. Brandon has the number two pick. I need to know who Brandon's taking because it matters. You know what I mean? Brandon, do not fuck around, please. I need you to, I need you. I need you. You know what I'm saying? There's money on the line, Papa. But um, yeah, bro, you had Maglio Donez, Miguel Maglio. Cabrera. Oh man, you was you always drafted very, very well. I have to give yeah, you, you just back. drafted all the young players so that in two years <laughs> they were like 90s. And I'm like, what the like <laughs> your team was always ranked higher than mine. Always. Yeah, you I, had I, wanted, I wanted to win now. You want to <laughs> win in like two years when I was like, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> done with that like that shit was fire though see yeah. if they did that though do you know how much we would consume that though yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. especially if, for people like look dvd plays uh diamond dynasty with me all the time it would be dope if i could play you guys on twitter and then we could right. always have like some connection but it is what it is shout out my man armin what's going on papa welcome armin. to the show oh, uh my man aaron what's good papa aaron, hope all as well Listen, guys, we're going to do MLB predictions today. We got a special guest. He's on his way right now. He's buying milk and groceries for the wife. So we have to, like, give him some moments. We, yeah. We're we not those type of people that, yo, you got to be here on time. No, 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 no. no. Well, we're, we run on Spanish people time. So you hear what I'm saying? But interestingly enough, before we, while we wait for our special guest to arrive, all that stuff that we, that we talked about that did not matter kind of mattered yesterday. But we weren't available. But I guess we could talk about it now. Yeah. The spring breakout game. We got to see all the kids, all the yeah. prospects that me and you have made videos about and just talked that nauseam about. They actually got to play a game, and they won against a very, very, very top-end farm system in the Nationals. So, I don't know. What are your thoughts? What did you gather? Did you get any highlights? Um, did you consume any other information that happened? Because I, I did see, like, really promising stuff. Yeah, Ryan Clifford. Um, right off the bat, like him hitting that opposite field um, double, I think it was. Yeah. Driving that runner. Um, you obviously see the pop out of him. Um, I, I think it was Gilbert. Gilbert mm -hmm. caught one off of the wall. I think it was barehanded, and he mm -hmm. threw a dart to second base. If that ball was hit a little bit harder, I think he would have got the guy out at second, the way he threw mm -hmm. that ball. And you saw it in, like, some of the videos that we have, like, of seeing these guys, like, throw the ball into the infield, like how how their arm strength plays a part and, you know, how we evaluate them. So throughout the entire game, I, I love what I saw from the boys. I know that, you know, a lot of them didn't get to play the full extent of the game and stuff like that, but um, it was good to see them. And from the guys that we care about the most, yeah. um, I think it was a good showcase. For yeah, them. absolutely. And, you know, um, we even got to finally see one of our high draft and uh, picks from last year, Brandon Spratt. I had texted yep. you, yo, look at this dude. This dude yep. is killing it. So it the Mets have pitching prospects. The Mets have mm -hmm. young outfield prospects. Dominic Hamill. Hamill. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, great. man. Hey, look, if you're not locked in for the future, man, hey, right, man, don't get on the bandwagon when it takes off. But shout out to the 54 people here on this beautiful yes, sir. Saturday morning. Beautiful Saturday. Beautiful. Yes. Just remember... It's Met Land in here, Papa. But if you root for another team, this is also a very good show for you because we're going to be predicting win losses for everybody today. And we figured, you know what I'm saying? Me and brother, we talk, you know, a lot of baseball, one another about the Mets. But we also sit here and say, you know what? Like, it'd be nice to take just a little bit of a break about the Mets, right? Because that's all yeah. we do. So we figured, you know what? Let's get let's get our uncle, a resident uncle, you know what I'm saying? Our homeboy. Yo, eh. My man Ant is in the building. Let me get this set up. Papa, que lo que Yo. mi gente. <laughs> that is the best intro I've ever received ever. Yeah. <laughs> That's it right there. Even even with my tardiness, I'm I'm all hyped up now. I had my Wendy's. I had to eat something real quick. I had to hydrate. All right, all right, I'm ready to go. Right. No, we yeah. told the world you were getting milk and cookies for the wife. You know what I'm saying? We had to paint you a beautiful picture, Papa. <laughs> How, How are you guys are you? doing? We're good, man. We're, we're good, good, man. We're like right. we're catching up. We took a little bit of a break. Yeah. Spring break can be very like like little, but we're no, kinda, you need it. 
Yeah, we're kind of yeah. getting back. You know, the, the season's coming. So we're kind of like starting to rev up the engines and stuff like that. Ideas falling in. You know what I'm saying? We got you here today. We are very thankful for you to spend yes. some time with us today, brother. Um, how are you, though? I'm doing great. There's no place I'd rather be on a Saturday afternoon than with uh, ah. the rest of the, the bloodline, the Shea bloodline Ooh. here. So um, this is, th th this, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Oh, here we go. I'll on this side. Throw it up. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Uh, you know what? I, I, I thought I was told that we had no pitching prospects. I was told the same thing. Right? Yeah. 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 What a game yesterday. <laughs> Against a very good farm, by the way. Yeah. Good hitters. It was better it. than the, uh, they, they might actually beat the team that played last night. Hey, man, listen. <laughs> I looked a few times down at my phone because we were away at a, at a wedding and we were, I was like, oof. You know what? Thank yeah. God we're at the wedding. Because you know what? <laughs> I'm pretty sure everybody's like, all right, I'm going to watch like SmackDown or I'm going to go just watch a movie because you know what? This one's a wrap. Everyone just wanted to watch the kids, you know? Well, I missed the Hollywood rock entrance to watch uh, Wild Thing Shintaro Fujinami walk the ballpark. So that was fun. I love seeing your tweets, too. They kind of <laughs> they kind of resonate very well. They kind of resonate. Very I do well. my best. I do, I, I do my best. So someone even tweeted out to me. He's like, man, you're tweeting even during spring training. Got it. I mean, that's just me. Yeah. You me. know, if what? I'm watching the game, I'm going to tweet. Bro, you love the Mets, man. You, you know what's funny, though? My baby brother tells me this all the time. He goes, yo, none of this matters, bro. <laughs> Yeah, it's man. true. It's true. It's He's true. Like, but you, you, you do want to see results. And you yeah, know, oh, course, you yeah. know, Fujinami is most likely, even before that, even before that like awful inning he had yesterday, uh, he's probably not going to make the roster. And I would say that because everyone else has pitched so well out of the bullpen, and he's got an option. So, yeah. you know, I would not carry him just to carry him, yeah, because he's a name. I would, you know, give Michael Tonkin or Sean Reed Foley or even um, Johan yes. Ramirez, give them mm -hmm. the opportunity because they've earned it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree. agree. I agree with that. Uh, Sean Reed Foley is been very impressive. impressive. I, I was I used to make fun of him. I used yeah. to call him Sons of Anarchy, you know, Castaway or something like that. But he he he's I don't know, maybe come back from the injury a yeah, lot better. I think he's fully yeah. healthy now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you he get looks, to see some really good better. stuff. Yo, let me just give a shout out to the 70 here. That's the most you ever had, obviously, because Ant is here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, our, our credit score went up, just putting it out there, all right? <laughs> so we got 73. It's going up, Papa. It's going up. The bloodline. I need ones in the air in the chat, Papi. I need oh, ones man. in the air. We got Carlos in here. What's up, Papa? We got okay. Frankie in here. Frankie What's going on? Good. My man DVD showing us love. DVD. Armin showing us love. Giving us the fingers up for the bloodline. Oh, I love that. I love that. Aaron. Yo, we we got Yuki Matsui in here. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody in the chat. 74 is going up. Your, if this goes up, your credit score goes up. So, you know what I'm saying? You Just stick with us. You know we're doing good when Yankee fans show up to the place. Oh, uh, shout out to, to Aaron Rodgers over there. I think they need more content so they come to us. You know what I'm saying? The more fun places. But speaking of fun, not only do we have Anthony Rivera here of Subway to Shade, please give him a like, follow, and subscribe yes. to his podcast. Mm -hmm. That is our resident, Theo. Um, we have another fun individual, Keyshawn. Please introduce this amazing young man. We got coming out of John Hopkins University, woo -woo! You know what I'm woo -woo! Son, affiliated with Shay and Sons. Woo! Hey, Jimbo! Woo! Yo. Oh, we oh you are my you mic'd up. What a horrible <laughs> intro. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I, 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 you are mute, mute Papa. Bro. You muted up. Yeah, you, you are muted, Papi. You out here, you moving wild already, Papa. Oh. Credit score is going to go down. Good. Good. <laughs> there we go. There we go. What's up, brother? How are you, man? Yo, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah, I, I, I honestly forgot the live was today. I was looking, I was like, oh, shoot. Let me hop in here. Let me hop in here. Good, bro. You're good. Yeah, Listen, yeah, we run yeah. on Spanish time here. Even uh, Ed was late. It's all good. It's <laughs> late on time. Don't worry. About I'm, it. I'm glad you're here, yeah. Jim, uh, because we could talk about the full slate of baseball. You know what I'm saying? Yes, it doesn't have to be just about the Mets. And we can hear some of you and Ed's thoughts about the season upcoming. And That's obviously, great. we have uh, we got a little bit of news yesterday mm. with one Blake Snell. 
Oh. And where he's being rumored to. Oh. If you want to fill them in, Keith. So apparently, while we were um, getting highly intoxicated for our brother Joe, shout out to Joe, by the That's way. He got married. Yeah, Joe, Joe, Joe and Shadia. Beautiful ceremony. You know what I'm saying? Interracial couples. God bless you all. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> throw that in there. <laughs> shout out my Italians, baby. You know what I'm saying? Um, we found out Blake Snell might be going to the Houston Astros. Holy shit. Astros yeah. getting Blake Snell and Josh Hader. Your thoughts, gentlemen. My God. Yo, where does that put that rotation at? That'd be <laughs> Framber, Javier, Snow, or whatever order it is. Or Kitty for Or Kitty. Luis Garcia, right? Garcia. Luis Garcia. Yeah. Garcia. Yeah. Damn, yo. I mean, it was good before. I mean, yeah, it was yeah. good before. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely I mean, was. Going to be a problem for Texas, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. You know, Texas, I mean, uh, Houston needs none of these people. And they go out and get like, they're going to go out and get Blake Snell. They got Josh Hader. They had a good bullpen already. And then they add Josh Hader to it. So yeah. it's like, hopefully that's, you know, everyone talks about being the uh, East Coast Dodgers. Can we be like the East Coast Astros? Or Amen. Something? Mm. Oof. Amen. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Susie. Please, everyone, give Susie yes. the number one lady in the content game. Yes. Bourbon and baseball. Yes. She supports the Astros. Yes. Give her some love. Shoot her a like and a follow. She's also letting Aaron, a Yankee fan, know to not Ooh. be salty because here comes Blake Snell Ooh. to the Houston Astros. My gosh. <laughs> oh, so. oh, don't forget, they got Verlander, you know, in the middle of June when he comes back. So. Yeah, this is, oh, well, oh. Does that matter? <laughs> it oh, matters man. for us. Hopefully, he comes back in like yeah, August. Don't, you know come, back. don't, don't, man, don't, <laughs> don't come back at all, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again for joining us this Saturday. We are at the 90 mark. All right, credit scores all around going up. You know what I'm saying? We're on the road mm -hmm. to WrestleMania. Get your ones up in the air for the bloodline. Feel me? We are going to predict or give our predictions for all 30 teams. You know what I'm saying? All 30 teams. We're going to base this off DraftKings over unders. All right. Okay. We're going to go around right. the horn. We're going to start right now. We're going to an ABC order. Uh, obviously, when we get to the team we do love, we will spend a little bit more time on them. So just putting it out there. But um, I'm going to start, baby brother. We'll go with you, and then we'll go around. Um, defending National League champions, Arizona Diamondbacks are slated at an over-under 83 and a half. Your thoughts, my brother? I say over. Oh, I say over, but they are a fringe playoff team because I think it's got it's kind of gotten deeper in terms of like the the contenders for the last slot for the wild card. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Anthony, I agree. I think they're gonna do over. <clears throat> I don't know if they're gonna repeat in the playoffs or or go to the World Series again, but yeah. um, this is a team that. You know, you always see this, right? Like one of these teams kind of like backs into the playoffs uh, by some way or some might. Mm -hmm. And then the next season, they kind of just follow it up, you know, a lot better than they were uh, the previous year. So I could see them, you know, winning uh, a, a little over. They got another year of Corbin Carroll on, yeah. on the team. He's he's their young stud. So yeah. um, it could be superstars very soon. Um, but uh, I do see Arizona going over probably around 86 wins, maybe. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, Jimbo. Yeah, I do. I do see what you mean. I feel like it's gonna be over, but also I feel like this is one of those teams where, like, like you know how, like in twenty twenty one, we saw the Giants kind of win all those games, and we kind of couldn't really explain why. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how Arizona felt last year, especially in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So it's also a team where I feel like, like one wheel kind of falls off, and they could, you know, mess around, have like a seventy eight, seventy seven win season. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Very but. Good. I feel like they proved they do have a lot of talent in house. I love Corbin Carroll. Uh, he was a uh, got in the first round of my fantasy league uh, this year. Oh, We're nice. really happy about that. Yeah, nice, very nice. Very um, nice. But um, yeah, man, I don't know. I don't know. It's I, I I do feel like it's over, but it's also that's that's kind of a tough team. Plus, their division just got so much better. Yeah, over the yeah, off season. Absolutely. So it's like it's gonna be a tougher road for them. 
I'm going to say over, but not by much. I think they're going to be like an 84-win team, and I think they do back in again into the playoffs because I just think they, they have a really good lineup. You know, getting Eugenio Suarez to replace uh, Longoria, I think that's a nice upgrade. They got uh, another year Christian Walker. I mean, mm-hmm. you guys mentioned Corbin Carroll, Alec Thomas. You know, they have they have studs. Gabriel Moreno. Moreno, who, yeah. He's a very good catcher, very up and coming. Well, I think the, the the acquisition of uh, Eduardo Rodriguez should help them. Mm-hmm. They should extend the rotation a little longer. But I think they are good. Like, I think that's a good point that you made, Jimbo. Uh, the division is going to be tough. You know what I'm saying? And, um. I think the Dodgers, you know, we'll get to them, but it, there's a lot to speak on about that team in itself. But we're going to move on to an very interesting team to all my friends at Metland. Shout out to the 96 in the room, by the way. Um, the Atlanta Braves, ladies and gentlemen, they are slated at an over under at 101 and a half. Over under. Anthony, I give you the floor first. It's always tough when you get to 100 wins to take an over here. Right. Uh, they won 104 games uh, last season. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm gonna say they win about a hundred. Okay. I don't know if they go. I don't know if they go over 101. They might hit 101, but that doesn't hit the over. Correct. Uh, so maybe a hundred, 101 games. Their big addition might be very underrated, and that's Chris Sale. Yes. Now look at what they do with the pitching staff. I mean, yes. if they can get Chris Sale 100 percent healthy, he is going to be a huge difference maker. And, um, you know, that, that, you know, they also brought in Jared Kelnick. So I don't know if that's going to mean much. And then they just signed Adam. Uh, they just re-signed Adam Duvall, right? Or they brought him back yeah. since he went to Boston last year. So I have them probably a hundred to 101 wins, not over. And that's not bad either. I mean, no. Atlanta's going to win the division, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're, I, I, I'm, I, I'm sure we're all in agreement on that. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Jimbo. Yeah. Team's just too good. It's just too good. But, like, you know, 101 wins is just so – it's just kind of a number that's hard to predict. I don't know. Like, even if they win 99 games, they could still win the division by, right. you know, like 10 yeah. games. Agreed, realistically. Yeah. So it's like – but I don't know. But the thing, the thing I will say, which is why I'm leaning under on that, is because they just had it was a, it was a, it was a year where all of their lineup just felt like they overperformed. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, Acuna's year, like 40, 70. Is he going to get that again? You know, yeah. who knows? Who knows? I mean, he's like the only person that could. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? So it's like, is he going to do that again? Matt, even Matt Olson, is he going to do that again? You know? Hope not. I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. I mean, Austin Riley, he's proven to be pretty solid and pretty consistent. So, you know, you kind of know what you're going to get out of him. But um, yeah. it's just kind of a line. I mean, Marcelo Zuna, is he going to be who he was last year? He's going to be mm-hmm. who he was two years ago. Two years ago, he was one of the worst hitters in the league. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's, so that's why I think they're a team that could also underperform. Uh, but like like you said, like they could still win 98 games and win the division by a lot. So speaking of one on one. We got 101 in the room. Shout out to the 101. I'm, I'm Big sorry. up. Mad love. Mad love. And um, Keyshawn, round us up. I don't know, man. Uh, 101 and a half. I'm going to take the under. Obviously, they're going to win the division. I think they'll win it pretty convincingly. Probably, probably by about like five, seven games around there. Um, I could see them regressing to Jimbo's point because they just had an unreal offensive output from yeah. like one through nine. Like Orlando Arcia, like Travis Darno, it didn't matter who was in. Uh, Sean Murphy had like one of the best offensive years we've seen from a catcher in in a minute. Like it was, it was kind of ridiculous how mm-hmm. well that lineup performed, and they just do for a regression. You just do for it, and then also, I think the division is better than where it was last year in terms of like pitching. I think, I think that the Phillies got better in that department. I think the Marlins are a very good pitching team, even though it looks like some of the guys are kind of regressing now. Um, and obviously, we don't know what the Mets are yet, but spring training tells us things are looking up. Yeah. So I just think they're due for a regression, but I don't think it's that far off. So I, I'll take the under. Shout out to the chat. Shout out to the 103. We're going up. Everyone's credit score is going up today, ladies and gentlemen. My man CP in the building. Eric, what's going on? Patty. You know what I'm saying? We love you, my dear. Hope everything is well, my dear. We're going to move on to the next team. Very interesting and fun team. Baltimore Orioles over under 90 and a half. Keyshawn, lead us off. That's over. 
That's an over, but like over by like 91. Because oh, okay. that division is so unique that they just beat the living shit out of each other every year. Mm-hmm. And we get to watch, and it's so fun to watch. <laughs> and uh, uh, I love Baltimore and what they're building right now. I do think that they still are like a year away just because of, you know, the guys that they have still yet to mm-hmm. come up mm-hmm. and maybe some additions that they have yet to make that mm-hmm. I don't think they've made yet. But Corbin Burns is definitely going to help them. Um, and I thought that that was a great move by them because I don't think Absolutely. they need much in order to get him. So you pair that with Grayson Rodriguez, you know, um, obviously Jackson Holiday is going to come up. Yeah. He looks amazing. So I could see the over, I could see the money in the division, but that division is so like, they hate each other. Every game is like, I feel like it's game seven between them. And I really enjoy that about that. Mm-hmm. Anthony, your thoughts on the Orioles? I'm going to go over kind of around where uh, he, uh, he said, um, right around 91, 92 wins. Um, Corbin Burns, man, it was nice to see a team, you know, outside of the Mets. It was nice to see a team that was not, uh, you know, one of these top free agent getters or or big time spenders win the Corbin Burns sweepstakes. And yeah, great yeah. that it was Baltimore. They're yeah. going to take the next step in trying to get better and trying to win a World Series. And like what was mentioned, we haven't even seen Jackson Holiday yet. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and this team's going to win possibly 90 games. Um, I don't know. The Blue Jays are, to me, kind of like pretenders. Always. They, they, they try and it just never works out. So I won't buy it until I see it. I troll them uh, all Boston the time. is not going to be there, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Tampa's always hovering around. They're always doing their thing with the, with the minimal amount of, you know, money spent. And then you have the Yankees who we're going to get into, you know, took a big hit um, to their off season. So uh, we'll see what happens with them. But I do see Baltimore winning over 90 games, and I do think that they repeat and win the division now as knowing what's going on with the division as is. Mm -hmm. Jimbo, round us up. Uh, I'm a lot higher on the on the O's, I think, than most. I think they're going to hammering the over hammering the over like closer to like 98, 99, maybe 100 wins. Love that. Uh, I think I think they are. You know, maybe their their bullpen did take a hit. They lost Felix Batista. I don't know if that matters. They still have a very, very they signed Kimbrel. Solid. They, oh, they did sign Kimbrel. That's they right. They did Kimbrel. sign Kimbrel. So, like, yeah. So they still have, they have Kimbrel right. replacing at the back end of the rotation. They still have Yanni the Years. So they have the eighth and ninth inning figured out at the back end of the rotation. Their offense only is going to get better with the addition of Jackson Holiday, and you have seasoning on guys like Gunnar Henderson. Um, Adley Rushman is just a leader in that locker room. It's his team. Yeah. Cedric Mullins. Um, you have Ryan Mountcastle guy you forget about. You have Santan there, a guy that everybody forgets about for some reason. Yeah. I haven't. Trust me. That's my guy Even for next though. year. Ah, forget yeah. about Soto. I want him. <laughs> <laughs> He's more realistic. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like switch hitter, power from both sides. Like. The dismaling, you know, get the manager. And yeah, and even the their, even their, even the role players, guys like Jorge Mateo. You know what I'm saying? Like well, in that in Cedric Mullins, like, bro. Yeah, yeah, he's like, like, yeah, Teddy yeah. Moe, man, he's yeah. such a dog, man. But uh, they have guys hammer like, the over uh, too. Yeah, just I hammer it, hammer. I'm hammering I just think, over. It, I think they're going to be extremely good team. They're going to be extremely good team for a long time. They're going to be so fun. They're just going to mm-hmm. be fun. Like you want to watch a game, just throw on an O's game, and I think every game they have a chance to win. Honestly, I know um, one of the top end guys. Um, it's not his name's not coming to my mind. Suffering an injury right now. It's not Drew Kramer. It's the other guy. Um, but uh, I'm not sure if that injury is going to be uh, a prolonged injury. But I think just like Braddish. Anthony said, Corbin Burns. Yeah, Bradish. Yeah, Bradish. Braddish. Corbin Burns is going to pick up so much weight for them. They're just going to they're just going to be a beast. Um, good segue. We could kind of rapid fire through this one. I'm, I'm, actually, no, this is interesting. Boston, 77 and a half over and under. Keyshawn. Oof. I'll take the under. Taking the under, okay. It's under that right. that roster is not what okay. what Rafi said is just not good enough. Like it's just not. You guys are not trying to compete for this year. Yeah. You guys are you guys are worried about like signing a new manager at Liverpool than you are about your baby. <laughs> like, it's, it's just it's the truth. Like they don't care about the Red Sox no more. Like they, oh my so God. they're worried about like 
you know, when is Mbappe coming instead of like <laughs> when is the next like great first baseman coming? Uh, well, let me give context real quick. The people who own Liverpool own Boston, the Red Sox. Yeah. So just for anybody yeah. who does Sox, it. any Boston, Liverpool fans Boston. out there, God bless. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, um, but I'll but take yeah. Ando on them. <laughs> okay, Anthony, 77 and a half, my brother. Do you think they asked Mbappe if he could play shortstop? <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's the transition. They need a shortstop. Yeah, he probably has a better has better range than Trevor uh, Story does. Right? Yeah, now. man. So Jesus maybe it works Christ! Out. You know, I totally forgot Trevor Story even existed. Like, what a like that. terrible trade that? that is! Oh my god! Another Colorado Rocky that like you know leaves Colorado and you just totally forget. Oh. About. Bum. You would thought the Green Monster would like help the. Uh, yeah, the team won what seventy eight games last year, so the over under seventy. I'm I'm gonna go under. I mean, they, they their big top key addition was Lucas Giolito, and he's out for the season. Yeah, man, that's a bad that's a bad omen, you know. And then Rafi, like my brother said, saying we don't have enough. Yeah, and I think they'll regret the Verdugo trade, especially to the Yankees. I agree. I agree He's a thousand percent. Them. Like I Daniel Murphy crushed percent. us when he went yep. to Washington. I, I actually think that's a great point because, I again, I ask Yankee fans all the time, like, did you really need to do that? But did the Red Sox didn't really need to do that? Like, it just felt no need for both sides. Yeah. Them worse. They made the Red Sox worse, I think. So I think yeah. to win by that, you know, metric. Yeah. Jimbo, 77 and a half, Jimbo. Oh, yeah, poor Devers, yeah. Jim, yeah, what are your thoughts, man? Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. I mean, I don't know. I do like a lot of the talent on this team, but like I said, it's just it's a lot. It's it's a it's a lot of question marks on this team. Yeah. It's a lot of question marks on this team. Like this team could just fall apart. I do like Tyler O'Neill in that ballpark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think he could just sneak up and have a really good year. He's just, um, I really like you know Jaron Duran. I'm a big fan of his. I think Tristan Casas. Is yeah, also like a very good bat. I like I like Casas a lot. Too. Um, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of talent on this team. That rotation is like not good, but it's not horrible. I feel like uh, I feel like I don't I can't name like more than three starting pitchers on their team. So it's uh, I'm looking. Uh, I, I had to look up this roster. I had to. Like, what is there? <laughs> I'm gonna take that as the under. What there. <laughs> so what's like what's, the rotation? <laughs> the rotation is Ryan Bayo, Nick Pavetta, Cutter Crawford, Tanner Houck, Garrett Whitlock. Nick Pavetta, another year of Nick Pavetta at Yankee Stadium. God yes. bless. You know, Met fans wanted Nick Pavetta this offseason because yeah. he had like a he has like a tradable contract and stuff. I and was Met like, fans, I just yeah. totally ignored that. Though. Fans, like, <laughs> special. But I, don't, I, so, I mean, I don't know. I gotta go under, but I feel like they, they also have Von Grissom. We'll see what happens with him, but I don't know. Yeah, it's I, I it's probably gonna be under. I actually think they're gonna be like a 77, 76 win. Like that sounds like a good number. Yeah. yeah. I feel like they're gonna be like how we were last year in a weird way. Um yeah, yeah, they're like I, an angels type year where they like get hot for a little bit, but then yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. they're yeah. gonna tease their fans. So, you know, I mean, I don't really care much for the Red Sox as long as they beat the Yankees. You know, it is what it is. But uh, a uh, shout out to the one sixteen in the room. Just getting, you know, the more people, oh, one seventeen. The more people that get into this room, the more points you get on your credit score. Just putting that out. Right. Make sure you put the ones in the chat. I will get to the chat, but you know, say we got a lot to talk about. But make sure you shout it out for the bloodline. We have one eighteen. God bless you, beautiful, amazing human beings. Um, we're moving on now. An instant Met rival without knowing Ooh. they are a rival because they tend to just destroy the Mets. Ooh. The Chicago Cubs, 84 and a half over under. This is around the wild card mark. Keyshawn, your thoughts? 84 and a half. Hmm. I think that's very dependent on the rest of the division. Mm. But Easy going... division too, I think. Ooh, 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 ooh. 84 and a half. I think I'd go mm. under. Okay. And they're gonna disappoint. If they're All gonna right. disappoint this year, I think last year was kind of a, you know, they overperformed at certain points and then they fell off a cliff at certain points. And I think it's gonna be more of the same, but I don't, I don't think they're gonna make the playoffs okay. this year again. Even with bringing back Cody Bellinger, no, nah. I don't see it. Cody Bellinger is a very good player, but it was good that they did year to year with him. It's very he, smart. I couldn't he, agree more. Yeah, he's so volatile. And you, he's so far removed from that MVP season that it's hard to trust. So I, I'll take the under on this one. Anthony, over on the 84 and a half for the Chicago Cubbies. Oh, I think you muted, puppy. Of course. Uh, <laughs> I really feel that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I feel like this team, 
and their success is really based on the rest of the division, right? Are the Brewers yeah. going to take a step back? What's happening with the Cardinals? Are you know the Cardinals had a like one terrible year, and they've been like good for almost like three or four decades. Right. Um, yeah. You got the Pirates that, yeah. looking to turn the corner. The Reds right. are going to be interesting to watch. Those are fun. Um, I, I think maybe they're around this 83, 84 win team, bringing back Cody Bellinger, but they really didn't make any big additions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, outside of Shoti Minaga, who we wanted. Uh, maybe Hector Norris was another guy that we, I think we talked about on my show that they could have possibly got. So they're going to need some big performances from Seiya Suzuki, mm -hmm. uh, Christopher Morell, who's supposed to be the trade chip for Pete Alonso. He's yeah. going to have to take another step. I, I don't know if it was one of you guys that posted the tweet of him throwing it wide from third to first. Someone posted yeah. yeah, no, that was too bad. <laughs> yeah, Christa. You want to trade a guy, a guy who can hit 500 home runs who can't, for a guy who can't throw a ball 90 feet. Okay. Yep. But, but please continue. But yeah. I mean, the, the lineup is not terrible. Uh, you know, we talked about Boston having a decent lineup. Look at it. Nico Horner, Dansby Swanson, Ian Happ, Cody Bellinger, Say Suzuki, Christopher Morell, Michael Bush, Yan Gomes, and Mike Talkman. I mean, it's, the bottom of the lineup is pretty Metzian, but um, besides that, uh, it's not bad. It, it's not bad. Let's oh see what they God. could do with the pitching staff, which is, I think, okay. I, I would say around 82, 83 wins. For so I'll go under. I'll go under. But what, what? Hold up. But what's up with the Cubs wanting all the Mets like claps or, or people that they interested in? It was Craig Council, mm. Alonzo. Mm. Uh, who you just named one was it Suzuki? Mm -hmm. Another one, mm -hmm. Managa. Managa. Oh, Managa. Managa. Naris. Mm -hmm. Like you know, I don't want no Christopher Morel. I want they Alonzo. I they can have you. all those guys. They can have all those guys. They ain't getting Pete. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, amen. Yeah. Jimbo, 84 and a half. Talk to me. Uh, I'm going under. I think this is a disappointing roster. Uh, I don't <laughs> think Cody Bellinger is gonna like do what he did. <laughs> I don't I don't think they're good. I don't think they're good. I don't think Cody Bellinger is gonna do what he did last year. I think that was like a prove it year. And yeah. now that he got his his money, he's just kind of gonna settle in like he did with the Dodgers. Uh, but I do I am really high on Shoto Imanaga. I think okay. he is the sneakiest Cy Young uh candidate. Uh, oh, out there, nice. you know. I think I think he's. People were saying, arguing against him versus Yamamoto, like who was better. You know, Yamamoto had more success in the Japanese league, but in terms of their arsenal, you know, it's a lefty guy. I think he could have a really good year, a really good breakout year, but it's just not top to bottom. It's not. It's not a good team. I I, I want for for um because you know I'm I'm very petty. You could probably call me the most pettiest guy on Mets Twitter. I I for agenda purposes want them to go under just so I can have. <laughs> you know, stuff in the chamber to let off because, you know, Craig yeah. Council's won. You know, I want to let everyone know, like, how, you know, mid Craig Council is compared to our first-year guy because I'm so behind Mendy. Um, you, know you know what? Throw him in the too. same realm as Bob Melvin. Yes, another mm -hmm. mid guy that the Met report is associated us with. So that's one. Another guy that I have agendas with is Dansby Swanson, who apparently – and everybody in Mets uh, – the, 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 the MLB writers think is better than Francisco uh, Lindor. And then number three, they have a, they have a beat writer, Jesse something. This is how mid or not even important he is. Jesse something. I can't even – Jesse Rogers, I think it is. I can't even get his name right. But this guy has been shaking his you-know-what – for Morel to be traded for Pete Alonso and absolutely got to be the funniest trade proposal ever seen. So even if they win 83 games, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be a, just a terror against them just, just for, just for narrative purposes. Cause I, you know, petty, you know, petty people win, you know, in life. So I have to, you know, represent, you know, that they people. are going to pump up Morel in Chicago. Cause they don't really want him. Yeah. They want Pete. Yeah. So they're going to pump that boy up and make oh him God. sound like he's so God. good. He's so not he even better than Vientos. We don't even know that. You know, like he, Ventos could be better than him, which is he funny. He has no position right yeah, now. Yeah, he's literally – Vien he he's no Vientos with like a visa. Like, let's be real. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> we don't even know what he's going to be. But I hope it's under. I'm praying for it. Um, This next team, I don't know. I, honestly, this is an – I, I, this we may spend a lot of time or a little bit of time. This is very interesting. But shout out to the 130 in the room. Um, the White Sox over under at 60 and a half. I honestly I don't know. Well, I, I, they, Keisha, your thoughts. They just so cease for like like uh, they're gonna be pieces, but like in the future, and uh 
Man, I feel so bad for Luis Roberto. Yo, like, <laughs> you know, I want him to be a mess so bad, and it's not gonna happen. Mm-mm. But I'll just, I, I'll, I'll say over, but I'm not confident. Anthony, sixty and a half, the White Sox. So they had sixty-one wins last season. So Ooh. we're expecting them to put a full-on Oakland drop and be that terrible. Shit. How could you possibly do that with the key addition of Eric Fetty? <laughs> another, <laughs> I knew that was coming. Another God. conversation that we had on my show, the three of us, yes, about yo. the legendary Eric freaking Fetty. <laughs> I, I I don't I don't know. It's it's very tough Whoa. in that in that uh division because the Royals somewhat got better. Um, uh, you got you got Detroit trying to get better. They got Javi Baez and his great bat out oh there in uh, in Detroit. That's wow. a sad division. That's that a is really- a sad division because I don't even know how good the Guardians are. We're, we're going to get to them shortly too. Yeah. Um. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we did. Ibby in the chat saying the meltdown we had for Eric Fetty that night. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, Ibby's he's... here. It's Ibby. Yeah, yeah, Hi, good. Ibby. <laughs> What's up, Ibby? What's going on? Bro. Shout out! Oh, we at one thirty nine. Shout out to all you beautiful oh, yeah. people. Get your ones up in the air for the bloodline. You know what I'm saying? All the meth fans. We all part of the bloodline. Your credit score just went up about ten points. Everybody. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and, and to be fair, we were just wrapping up my show at like maybe about an hour yo, and a half, that was and that worst. added another hour to talk about Eric Fetty. <laughs> Anthony, that was the worst hour of the well, one of the worst hours of the off season, bro. We spent so much time on Eric <laughs> Fetty, yo. Like, yo, would you take him now? Like with everything, I I, I don't know. I don't would think you? so. No. Yeah. Nope. No. You with the same injury? Have, I was I thinking have, about that. I have confidence mm. from what I've seen that Tyler McGill can give you the same yeah, or even so better uh, stuff and have a better season than what Fetty has for the money that he got. Good Look point. at Jose Buto. Yeah, Jose Buto. We might I have mean, a little we, diamond in the rough there. We, we'll, we get gonna, to the we, we'll get to the Mets. We'll get to the Mets. We'll get to the Mets. We can't, yeah, you we know can't what? help it. We can't help it. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in White Sox land, so yeah. I'm going to say – I'm gonna say under. Oh, Jimbo, real quick, who do you th- what do you think about this one? Bro? Yeah, I'll keep it short. The white, they're, they're not good, man. They're not good, man. And it's one of those things too, where like, where like the team is so bad that I feel like even their good players are just gonna be like, what's the point? You know what right. I mean? Right. Yeah. Like Detroit last year, Detroit did. Yeah. The, or the year before, they did the same thing. I think I think they should trade Robert, right? Like, what's the point of keeping they, him? They should. They should because they're not going to get the best out of him while he's still there, and you might as well get as much value for him as possible. I mean, like, the cease is gone. Yeah, you know, you're going to have him for another year if you like. Yeah. You might as well. I mean, you might as well. Eloy Jimenez, Luis Robert, you can get something for those guys, you know. And if you're going to stink, if you're aim, if you're yeah. aim, if you're locked in at even. 60 under 65 wins like what what does it matter having a guy like robert or, or eloy jimenez i i think at minimum eloy jimenez gets dealt but honestly if if the white Sox are at 60 and a half right there i mean i have to i don't know honestly i don't i, I can't even they, they gotta I, i'm gonna have to say under because i can't i don't really? feel confident in anything going over with these guys <laughs> I, I, it's just it, i don't know well, let's just turn the page to a more exciting team and i i want to i want to i was aiming to talk about this specific team because of the number that they're at and of the team that they have the cincinnati reds are at 81 and a half over and under i'm gonna start this is gonna be when the mets piss me off somewhere around june and i need to take a break from the mets i will be tuning in to the cincinnati reds i think i don't know if it's going to be a significant win increase but i think they are the like the Whole Foods version of the Baltimore Orioles in the National League. And I really, really think their brand of baseball is going to be very exciting. I remember last year they had a series against the Braves and they put it to them. And they just didn't care that they were the big bad Braves that were beating up on all Major League Baseball. And everybody in that line of Matt McClain, uh, Spencer Steer, um, Ellie De La Cruz, like all those kids, they just put it to them. And this offseason, they added a ton of bullpen help, which they needed. 
I think the only bad move they really made, which is a move that a lot of people don't know much about what it could be, was the Frankie Montas deal. I don't know how the hell he got his money that he got. But I just think they're going to be, you know, Baltimore of the National League, and they're just going to be so much fun to watch. Baby bro, your thoughts on the Reds? I'm going over, by the way. I have them at like 83, 84. I'm going over. I'm going to say over because I do think that they are improved um, from last year. And I think it's going to be like, I think that division is so fun because you have O'Neill Cruz and Ellie. Yeah. And I think it's yeah. like, going to drive both of them. Like, mm-hmm. to see, like that that competitive drive to see who's better. Because they're going to cruise the better cruise missile. <laughs> yeah, they're going to they're gonna be prepared like their entire careers because they came up at the same time. So I think that's so fun about this division as well. But I'll, I'll say over. Um, I think they have a better team. The only problem that I really have with them is they're starting pitching. I'm not too high on it. Yeah. But if they can, because they did make a few moves here and there last year to help their team, if they could do the same thing at the trade deadline or even, like, sign a guy who still hasn't been signed yet, mm-hmm. um, I think they'll they'll be in good standing. So I, I could definitely see them in the wild card race. Jimbo, Cincinnati Reds, 81 and a half, over under. Yeah, so – this is an exciting team. I really there's a ton of talent on this team. I do think they're like, like one, like one guy away. Yes. I feel like either in the rotation, yeah. yes, or either or in their lineup, just for some stability. Because you still just I have agree. a lot of young guys in there. Um, I would have loved them to go get a guy like Adam Duvall. Okay. Um, kind of the Braves. Uh, that would have been yeah. There were one more right-handed bat in the middle of that lineup. Put him in the outfield. He could have played center for them. Yeah. Um, but, I wanted I them mean, to get Corbin still, Burns. I wanted them to get Corbin Burns. That would have been dope. Yeah. That would have been really good for them. Yeah, yeah. Just, 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 just some sort of guy that can, even a guy like I don't know. I don't even really know on the pitching side of it, but like a veteran guy to just be, you know, stable in the, in just the rotation, just with a lot of question marks. You know, Hunter Green, a very volatile guy. Nick Lodolo, a very volatile guy. Yeah. Um, and Drabbs in the second season, I think he's really good. Um, but you know, he came up and he was lights out, and then he finished with a four yeah, ERA. Yeah. So it's like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. But I I think they, but I do think you know they can go at the deadline, get a guy, and you know be, you know, a solid, you know, you know, seven eight seed in the playoffs. See what we got. But you know, mm-hmm. interesting. You know, so you they, they can beat a lot of teams in the playoffs. If they make it. So I'm gonna say over. Okay. Uh, just because I like the talent. And I think they'll just end up getting that guy in the middle of the season. Nice. Nice prediction. I like that. I hope they do, honestly, because I'm rooting for them. Before we get to Ant, Keyshawn, we had 161 people in here, bro. (laughs) Yo, this is nuts. Yo, big up. I can't really get to all the comments, but if you guys see them, let me know because I'm putting the win record up here. But thank you again. All of our friends, appreciate you. We have been taking a little break, you know what I'm saying, because spring training, good Lord. But we are almost back. So putting that's why we're doing this show. Anthony. Cincinnati, 81 and a half. Bye-bye. I am going to go over. And Ooh, all of us. You, all right. Yeah, Unanimous. if you have uh, MLB TV or extra innings or whatever, and you need to watch another team, this is the team you should be watching. Yes. Nice upcoming young team. Um, I do like the move to bring in uh, Heimer Candelario yes. uh, to play yeah. in the infield. They, they did some business in the bullpen. Nick Martinez, Emilio Pagan, uh, Brent Suter. Yeah, I think Frankie Montas is going to surprise only because he left the Yankees. Now he's got a lot of pressure off his back. He's healthy. <laughs> Could grow a beard. He's surprise some people. The Sonny Gray like effect. Yeah, he's going to pull one of those Sonny Gray Sunny type Gray. moves. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. And and one starter that I really liked in the rotation, and I had him on my fantasy team, was Andrew Abbott. Yeah, um, Abbott is a good pitcher. Yeah, he is bad. a good pitcher. And I, mm-hmm. you, you throw in, you know, if they can get Hunter Green right, because he can freaking yeah, throw strikeouts man. like crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, if they can get him to to harness his power, he's going to be another good one. Nick the Nick Lodolo ending up the rotation. That 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 could be they kind of they kind of the rotation kind of reminds me a little bit of the Mets. There, there are some ifs in there, but they do have the talent. So if they could harness the talent, that'll be big for them. Yeah, and with these new rules, like it just falls into their lap because this team runs. You know, like mm-hmm. they just. It, it, one of these guys gets on the base pass. They are almost you, they almost guaranteed to steal a base or just to get the extra base. It's just fun to watch. It's a good brand of baseball. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Next team, Cleveland Guardians, 79 and a half. Um, I honestly, I I would 
I really don't know if they're any much different than last year based off like any additions because I can't recall anything they did, but they might be a little bit more healthier. So I guess that's why they might be looked at as a little bit improved. But I, I think I think they're due for a setback. I think they have a lot of talent. I just think that they are I think they're in a good division that they can, you know, really rack up some wins. But I just think that at some point, I feel like we we as fans, we kind of expect the Guardians to always kind of be somewhat in the mix. And I just feel like they're going to hit a roadblock because I feel like the way the kids are up for like the Reds, it doesn't feel that way for the, the Guardians. I don't think the talent is very, you know, transcendent in the same way for the Reds. So I think they're going to be a little bit under. What do you think, Keyshawn? I think it's tough because this is going to be what, the first year without Terry Francona? Terry Francona, yeah. I think that plays a big part, and I think even uh, Vote, I believe, is the new manager. Oh, the the former catcher from yeah, the yeah, okay. Stephen Vote, cool. yeah, um, yeah, man, I don't know, um, because I think Shane Bieber is just not gonna be on the team come August, so I think right, they're like they're gonna sell at some point. Yeah, you know? I, think they, I think they are gonna sell. I don't think they'll sell like a Jose Ramirez. I don't think it'll be like that, but I no. think they'll sell like Shane Bieber, maybe some bullpen arms that they have. Of veteran hitters anywhere in the lineup, they'll probably sell as well. So they they have up and coming pitching. I do like McKenzie. I like a, a a few of those guys that they have already, but they're not in the right. They they were in that like class of like maybe if they made one more addition, they could you know become a contender, and they just didn't do that. Yeah, and I think now we're seeing like what happens when you don't. Right, have to have especially for the smaller market teams for sure, a hundred percent. Jimbo. Cleveland Guardians, 79 and a half over under. Um, I don't even know what this team. I, I actually am a decent fan of their pitching, but they just have one of the worst offenses to watch. Yeah. Yeah, They're good. just not excited. Even even their, their playoff teams just had just, yeah. just an anemic offense. So, I mean, I don't know. Like, they could just be that bad, but their pitching usually is pretty solid. So, it's like they're a team where, like, if they're, like, you know, they could be, like, five games over 500 at the deadline and, you know, you could see a different team or there could be, like, 10 games under 500, you know what I mean? It just depends on what their offense decides to do this year. If they give their pitch, if they give their pitching staff enough, it could be a team that sneaks into the playoffs again. But who knows? Who knows? Mm-hmm. Very uh, – I'm going to say under because I don't like watching. They're, like, the opposite <laughs> of the Reds. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if they're on the TV, I'm, I'm skipping that game because I just don't want to watch it. <laughs> Anthony um, said <laughs> and a half over. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'm going to go under here. Uh, they were 76 and 86 last season. The, all, all the offense is really Josh Naylor and Jose Ramirez. You look at the addition, Scott Barlow, Estevan Floriero, Austin Hedges, Ben Lively, uh, Davison De Los Santos, and the incomparable Carlos Carrasco. Um, oh, my God. Uh, and I, no offense to Carlos Carrasco. I love that guy as a person. I think he's a great dude. <laughs> Dang man, I, I I don't. He's on a minor league deal, so whatever. Yeah, but uh, you know, I don't yeah. want to hear that name again. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, it had to be said at least once. We we got it out of the way. He's done with. And uh, yeah, the 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 thing that sucks for the Guardians is that we have this new scheduling that happened last season where you don't play this same team in your division 19 yeah. times where they could have feasted off of the rest of the Very good division. Point. So, Very good you point. know, because of that, they're going to struggle like they did last season. And uh, since they did win only 76 games last year, I'm going to do the same thing this year and say that they're going to win. Uh, they're going to go under. I agree. Right. I agree. It seems like it's back to back. Uh, we all collectively agree. Nice. Uh, next team. Wow. Just Wow. Colorado Rockies, 60 and a half. I'm going to say over only because I like the state of Colorado. I like, like, I just like it. That's all. That's the only, that has nothing to do with baseball. There's like no reason. I'm just saying over because I want to be nice. Keyshawn. Uh, Over, under, who cares? (laughs) Chris, what do you mean? Chris Bryant cares, you know, $176 million, you know? Hey, listen, Ryan McMahon, they got hitters over there, but like, nobody gives a fuck. You know, the Colorado Rockies, let's let's be real. Come on now. Like, since Josh Fogg, has anybody really cared? Josh Fogg. Okay. Drop that name, you know what I mean? Wow. 
I'm assuming you're going under. You're going to have them in the 50 50 I'm, wins. I'm going under, but it, it also means like I'm going who cares. So, yeah, 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 fair yeah, enough. I'll go under. But if they go under 60 wins, I I no, I think no, I'm joking. They'll go over. I really do. They'll they'll go over cuz 60 is kind of joke. It's kind yeah, of Yeah, right? Ballpark. Like they'll run into wins because of that ballpark they always do. They did it against the Mets last year. Mm -hmm. Um so I think they'll they'll reach over, but like who cares? Right. Again. Jimbo, that's <laughs> 60 and a half. Colorado. Uh, did you know, statistically, the greatest pitcher in Rockies history is Herman Marquez? Yeah, I heard that. And he's coming off a torn labrum or something like that, right? This this, this team's horrible, man. I'm going to go I'm going under. The thing is, because they could just surprise you, just because they have they have they have hitters. They, they do. They they it's really they have good hitters in that lineup. It's really not going to matter because they just don't know what pitchers to have on their team. Like they might be the worst front office. They might be the worst front office. I think ever. Yeah. Like they've never figured out how to play in that park. They like you remember. I, you remember when they got sad. Ian Desmond from yeah. The, yeah. From the Rangers and put him in like, center. Yeah, he was a center. He was, yeah, they just threw him out there. He was good for like a year. <laughs> He was because of making uh, nothing. Sixty and a half is just it's, it's just so few games that like maybe they'll just win sixty one. That's not a good team. It, uh, I'm I'm gonna just say under. I'm gonna just say under. I just I don't believe in them. Sorry, Anthony. Charlie uh, Blackman's still around. Yeah, <laughs> still kicking too. Um, Colorado Rockies sixty and a half. Anthony. Oh, you muted again, Papa. Oh, my God. You know, you only muted for the shitty guys. teams. It's only for the shitty teams. They don't matter. But like, again, who yeah. cares? Yeah. You know, I, I have an article up here because I, I don't follow all the teams. And, you know, I wanted to see the key acquisitions, key departures, you know, make a better assessment here. When your key departure is Chris Flexen, uh, you going under. Oh. You Whoa. going under. Six <clears throat> under 60 for the Colorado Rockies. Chris Flexen. The guy that we had to pay for no reason, right? But Lee, for Trevor too. got another Chris Flexen clone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Get the Rockies out of here, man. I <laughs> think we should move on. Uh, shout out Ezekiel Tovar. I like him on the Rockies. Yeah, but, I do. Um, cool. Interesting team. The Detroit Tigers, 80 and a half, over under. They had one of the best records in the second half of the season last year. Um Will this be the year they sort of put it together and they kind of give their fans a, a winning or somewhat winning season? I think I am going under, and I'm not going under by much. I think 80 is a perfect mark for them. They won 78 games last year, and they added. They added a lot, and I think they needed to add a lot. One thing I will say is I think they have one of the best diamonds in the rough in – um uh, Tariq Skubal, I think he good, is yeah. going to be a big name this year. He is going to be a very considerable Cy Young candidate, and I think he alone can carry them towards the 80 win mark. I think they are still a few pieces away, veteran pieces. I think their most veteran acquisition was Mark Canna. Um, I do not think very much of that man as a baseball player, but... Um, I think their pitching is going to be very good in a very, very pitcher-friendly ballpark. Keyshawn, 80 and a half over under. I'm going to take the un, – oh, this is tough. because This is a good one, right? Yeah, that division stinks, yo. So it's like <laughs> they could run into like 81, 82 wins. I'm, I'll take the under, though, just because of the track record of the Tigers and this rebuild or whatever they're going through. Yeah. It, um. Like Spencer Torkelson, he's a good player. I like him. He's a, he's a good player, but like, is he gonna take that next step? Mm -hmm. Um, I believe they have a outfield actor. Riley Green. Riley Green is another good player, player. very good player. Thing to make a next step. So they have a lot of young pieces that they they're waiting to like make that leap. And I think they they just to your point, they could use a lot more veterans to help ease that mm -hmm. transition. And I don't think they have that right now. So I'll take down the. Jimbo, 80 and a half, Detroit Tigers. Yeah. I mean, I feel like 
Uh, yeah, to, to this point, I feel like uh, they have a lot of guys that are going to take a step forward next year. Um, guys like Spencer Torkelson, like he hit 30 bombs last year. Yeah. yeah good player. He could do it. He could do it every year. And I think, you know, he's so young. I feel like he, he'll just get improved as a hitter while having that as his baseline. Um, you got guys, even like even sneaky guys like Andy Banez, Uh People don't really talk about him a lot, but he hits the ball really hard. I ran to a lot of bad luck last year. Um, I personally just like his swing. I like him as a player. Uh, he's a guy that I think could take a step forward. But, you know, guys like Tarek Scoble, um, outside of him, that is kind of a weak rotation. I think if anything goes wrong next year, it's going to be on the pitching side. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, oh, except they have Javi Baez, who they're going to put out there every day, which is. Poor Javi. Even, Poor Javi, man. I it's wish bad. that it's didn't bad. turn out the way it is. Yeah, I mean, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to say under. I think there's too many question marks at the end of the day. But, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if they put something together. Anthony, 80 and a half over and under the Tigers. I'm going to go over by nice. by one or two games. Okay. You know, okay. You, the American League is not strong whatsoever outside four or five teams. So Detroit can pick up some wins here and there, like he mentioned, and, and you know, can kind of sway that to having the over there. Yes. Um, I do like the addition of Kenta Maeda. Uh, that's someone that I, I've wanted in the Mets rotation for a couple of years. Uh, maybe Jack Flaherty can turn back the clock and and, and come back too. and have a good season. But mm -hmm. uh, outside of that, you know, Javi Baez hasn't been the same since leaving the Mets, yeah. unfortunately for him. And he was their big acquisition that year with uh, Detroit. But yeah. Torkelson, Riley Green, I mean, you got some good players in here. Mark Canna is – Mark Canna is – what. Let's see, let's see what <laughs> <laughs> oh lordy lord mark there was, there was something in that tone of play. <laughs> i like mark can as the same thing with carlos carrasco i like mark can as a person as a person uh but the player left a lot left to be desired yeah shout out to the 190 in the room we're almost at the 200 wow. mark let's hit, hit that, that 200 two mark years. people That's we still got a lot more teams to go we're gonna be a little bit more rapid fire don't worry but there's a lot more teams that we really got to talk about the mm -hmm. next team and if i can a resident astro fan she's in the chat i know she's out here i know she's watching oh she's watching oh she's definitely watching she's watching my dear we will put your comment up when it gets posted but we're gonna go around the room now this mark is obviously without the acquisition of blake snell but currently as it stands the Houston Astros are slated for an over under of 92 and a half. That is a very good number. That is a team that could win a world series without Blake Snell. I think I'm just going to play devil's advocate here. I think they're going to get Blake Snell because every time the Astros want something, they go get it. And I think this is going to be an easy hammer of the over. I think this team is going to be a demon to mess with. I think this team doesn't like the fact that the Texas Rangers are the World Series champions. And I truly believe the Astros are going to come for all of Major League Baseball the way they did back when they were doing the trash can shit. I really do believe this is going to be a World Series contending team, and I'm going to hammer the over. And I think they're going to be a lot closer to 100 wins than the 92 and a half. Keyshawn. Yeah. Hmm. That was a very convincing argument. I, yeah, I should have. I should have went to lawyer school. Should have um, law school and well, shit. Yeah, you should have. I'm gonna take the under though, um, because I think that that division is very, very rough, and it it showed last year, obviously in the playoffs, but it did, you know, in the regular season, even with the Mariners, and the Mariners got better. So I think they win the division. I think it'll just be with a 90 win roster, and that's fine. Um, but that's without Blake's now. Yeah. Obviously, if they add him, I think this can be like a 97 win team because mm -hmm. um, I think the Rangers are going to take a step back. So, uh, yeah, this there, they, there, they, there we didn't even mention we didn't, so even, we didn't even mention Josh Hader. Josh Hader is another Josh guy. Hader, bro. Like the lineup is stacked. You got Jordan still in the building. You know, uh, Altuve, Bregman, Demons. This, like they're so like. They remind me a lot of like a lot of basketball teams that just like, you know what, we don't really care about the regular season, but when it becomes the playoffs, they kind of just know how to turn shit on. And I think they'll do that again because that's what they do. 
before we go to these beautiful gentlemen, we have to put up Susie's uh, prediction of the Astros. This is incredible. Susie from Bourbon and Baseball, our resident Astros fan, says, Over, bros. Addition by subtraction. We eat into 90 wins with a hurt Altuve and Jordan and fucking Martin Maldonado, our motherfucking catcher. You add Yanni Diaz not being a fucking black hole. It's safe to say uh, she's very excited for the Astros season. Um, so we're going over for our lovely, lovely Susie. Um, Anthony, you want to follow that up? <laughs> Yeah, I almost forgot that they lost Altuve at the World Baseball Classic yeah. for about a month or two oh, yeah. and oh. still eked out 90 wins there. I'm with you, Keith. I'm going over, man, probably by a, by close to 100. And it's for the reason you said. It has nothing to do with the players that were added or not. They are gunning for Texas. Revenge yep. season is coming oh, yeah. for Houston, and they want yeah. that. I mean, adding Josh Hader and at, possibly adding Blake Snell is like you know icing on the cake. But you look at the lineup, it's just stacked. The rotation is pretty good. And then you talk about adding, you know, Justin Verlander midseason, Lance McCullers Jr. and Luis Garcia midsummer. They could throw him in the bullpen or something. I don't know. But like Houston is going to be that team this season. Yeah, they're good, man. Jimbo, yeah. Astros yeah. 92 and a half, Papa. I mean, I think the Astros are one of the most complete teams, yes. I think, in the league. Um, yeah. Rotation, Penn, um, their lineup, and their lineup, I think, is going to be a lot better than it was last year. Just with having Altuve there every day, I think Jose Bray is going to be more like the second half in the playoffs than he was in the first half. Well, I mean, we'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, they're just – they're and, I mean, at this point, the Astros have been good for – a decade straight now. They're incredible. They're incredible, They're, bro. They incredible always, organization. They, they always people. refresh. They got one of the smartest front offices out there. I mean. They're just incredible. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I mean, over, over. They can easily win 100 games. 100%. Easily. We mean, wouldn't be surprised. They even mentioned Jeremy Pena. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah. Like, they're just. Yeah. It, we didn't I, even I, mention I, Kyle Tucker. Kyle Tucker. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Who's in the playoffs? By the way, so people want to get you know some revenge too. Yeah, he had a stinky playoffs, and I'm pretty sure he's been hearing a lot about it. And I think he's yeah. tired of it. He's a good player, man. And if you look at the last three years, Kyle Tucker, you stack it against Juan Soto, identical across the board, except for the walks, obviously. But yeah, Kyle Tucker is an absolute demon. Uh, next team, interesting team, very interesting. Over and under the Kansas City Royals at 73 and a half. I, I think I'm gonna go over. I don't know, Keyshawn. You, you, what about what about you? By the way, two hundred and one people in the room. I had to take a picture. I had to Some take a picture. Are. Everyone's credit Some score just went up two hundred points. All right, all right. Everyone could go get a, a Chevy off the lot right now. A nice Nissan. You feel me? Get your cool. ones up in the chat. You feel me? Hey Jesus man, Jesus Christ! No. Thank you, gentlemen. It's really because of you guys. You. Yes, yes. Facts first and foremost. Thank you to the people. Thank you to you too, mm -hmm. people, gentlemen. Um, 201 is crazy. That's crazy. higher than Mark Santos. They're Saturday. hanging out with us on a beautiful Saturday. They must be watching, they must be playing our MLB the show, and they got like, oh, look at this. They got these guys like, talking shit. The so, um, here's a city. Shouts oh, out to my boy oh, Chip. Man. I think they'll take the over six around their games. Bad division again, but they did improve in the offseason. I'm a big Bobby Witt fan. I love his game. I see a lot of Lindor qualities into his game. That I really do love, and um, yeah, I can I can see the over, but not by much. So, okay, okay, mm -hmm. Anthony, seventy three and a half for the Kansas City Royals. Uh, I am going to say uh, probably over by maybe a game or two, maybe 74, 75 wins. That's pretty much it. I mean, they added Seth Lugo, they added a revitalized Michael Waka. Uh, Will Smith looks good. Uh, the Hunter Renfro they've gotten as well. Adam Frazier. So uh, I think they'll be hanging around, you know, 73, 74 wins, especially in that division, which is, you know, trash. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, Jimbo, 73 and a half for the Kansas City Royals, the Bobby Witt Royals. Listen, maybe I'm crazy, but I'm kind of high on this team. I'm going to take the over here. Nice. I'm gonna take the over here. Um, Fuck your shit, Papa. Want to know what? I really like Cole Raggins. 
Oh yeah, um, he's he's yeah. Right, the left. Like, I yeah. really like Korak. I think he could potentially take a step forward and be one of those guys in the American League in the in the, in the whole MLB. Um, I really like them adding Seth Lugo. Um, I thought he proved himself last year with the Padres. Um, I think he could be really good. Yeah, Cole Raggins. Cole Raggins. I like him. I like him. And um, that offense, I kind of like what they added. I like MJ Melendez. I like Hunter Renfro. He's another guy that you could just roll out and hit you 25, 30 bombs. Uh, Bobby Witt, I think, is stud. one of the yeah. – just a stud. A stud. One of the – I think he's the top five shortstop in the league right now. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, very Absolutely. easily. Uh, Salvador Perez, you know, looks healthy. He looks good in, in spring training. So, you know, he's kind of a baseline high floor guy now. Um, Adam Frazier, um, I like his bat. Yeah, I, there's a lot of sneaky pieces. Vinny Bat Pasmentino, there's a lot of sneaky pieces. Yeah, I think he's this team's going to be better. Too, yeah. yeah, I think this team's going to be a lot better than people think. Um, I'm high on this team. I'm high on this team. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see that. I think they're going to go over. I think they're going to be. They're going to be an improved team. I do. I, I think they're going to – I don't know by how much. Um, my, not Maybe not by much, but they're going to be fun. I, I think that they they use Steve Cohen's money very well this offseason, and I think they're going to be very much improved. Um, moving on to the next team who um, – I don't know. I really, really feel bad for these guys. I don't know why. I just feel terrible for these guys. The Los Angeles Angels are marked at 72 and a half wins. I, okay. I don't know. They'll probably let us know. I, I know what it feels to lose a really good player. Um, they Jacob DeGrom, um, you know, Jose Matt Harvey, Ward. Jose Reyes. Um, I'm missing somebody. Daniel Murphy and so on and so forth. I know what it – I don't know what it feels like to lose the best player of our generation. That's wild. But in a weird way, I want them to kind of cook because I feel like they kind of like went through a lot of shit. But – I don't think they're very good, but another, but I like their manager. I love Ron Washington. I actually am hoping it's an over, but it's going to be an under Anthony, your thoughts. Yeah. No teams cooking with Aaron Hicks in the outfield. That's for sure. Baltimore was for a hot minute. Yankees weren't. <laughs> yeah, when that's that when that's your key uh, acquisition, uh, that that's unfortunate. Um, but yeah. they they had the two best players in baseball, and they only won seventy three games. Like crazy. Ron Washington is going to make a difference to the fact that he could possibly get them back to seventy three wins without. Shohei Itani is just not going to be this year. I think it's yeah. going to be under, and they have to do this rebuild. I want to see how under this goes before Mike Trout's like, I'm out of here. Like, he still wants to stay there. Yeah. It's crazy. I, I, I really – I question it every year, to be honest with you. Jimbo, 72 and a half, Angels. Yeah, I'm hoping it's way under so that their tickets stay cheap so I can keep going to their games. Dave's 20 <laughs> minutes away from me. Uh, <laughs> Listen, I looked at the home opener tickets. They're thirty eight dollars. Are you kidding? I would go. I would go. I'm not. Lying. I went last year. I went. It's last a nice year. park. It's a beautiful, beautiful park too. Be beautiful park. I sat at field level for fifty dollars last year. Home, home opener. Swear to God. Oh, Swear Lord. To God. Um, the, City it's, Field. You're sitting. You know, they have Pete Fernandez's retirement number for fifty. Yeah, man. Right? It's just one of those scenes that just has a stink over them. They've had it for a very long time. Just. They like they can have two of the best players in the world have two of the best seasons that we've seen and just still be bad. They just can't. I don't know. They have some young guys that I like. I like Zach Neto. Um, you know, we'll see what no Nolan Shenwell is. But I mean, I don't know with this team. I just don't know. I mean, yeah. what is Anthony Rendon going to do? Is he there? Who knows? Lord. Like, I, who who knows? I yeah. It's yeah. it's just. Bad organization. I mean, I just don't really know if the talent even matters. Keyshawn, Angels, 72 and a half. I got no strong opinion on the Angels. I do like Ron Washington. Uh, I'll take the under. And shouts out to Ra Anthony Rondon. You know what I'm saying? He just, he's just there for a paycheck, baby. <laughs> you know what? Who, wait, let me ask you a question. Hey, Who? listen, on Monday through Friday, that's all it is. Real, real you know, talk. Let's, let's be honest here. Game. Whose career would you rather have? Ben Simmons or Anthony Rondo? Anthony Rondo. Anthony Rondo. I yeah. want a championship and I'm getting paid all this guap to play in the crib? 
What? Yeah. Yeah. He he tapped out after they won in Washington. Oh, one hundred percent. Bessem is Bessem is wants to be America's next top model. He's not trying to be like he's not trying to play basketball. So Anthony Wando is not trying to play baseball, but he's set for life. Yeah. This is almost like a punishment that he has to go to the games because he don't want to. Yeah, man. 100%. Hundred percent. Uh, shout out to David in the chat. Ron Wash is a good. He is a good coach, but he, is a good coach. he needs to be on a better team, man. It's oh, yeah. it's just a mess out there. I wish um, you would have That would have been hilarious. Yeah. Good lord. I yeah. I, I'm a. All right, well, I think we're all going under here, right? This is. Yeah. I'm. I'm only kind of breezing through this team because I want to give you guys the full floor for this next team. Oh, uh, yeah. The Los Angeles Dodgers, the very expensive Los Angeles Dodgers who acquired Shohei Otani, who took him from the team we just talked about, also acquired Yoshinobu Yamamoto, also acquired Teoscar Hernandez, also acquired um, Glass now um, in a trade. I believe they added a few more players, but they also have added um, the yips in the infield. So <laughs> interestingly, I don't know. I don't know where I stand with this team because I think star power alone, they're very, very, very powerful. I just don't think this team is winning 104 games. I'm going with the under. Anthony, I know you got a lot to say about the Dodgers. Please, my friend, start yeah, us off. Yeah, uh, this is where this is where we're going to disagree. I, I, I think they are going to go with the over. Oh, shit. Okay. I okay. do. I do. The rotation needs to stay healthy, which has been really tough for them. But I do see them you know, being willed by this offense, Mookie Betts, Atani, and Freeman, the top three batters. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't even want to throw to them. It was like walk the bases at, at that point. But I, I think that this offense for now is going to carry the team while Yoshinomu uh, Yamamoto kind of, you know, gets his footing as a starting pitcher in America. Uh, Tyler Glass now, I don't know how much I trust right now. Um, they got Bobby Miller, James Paxton, and uh, Walker Bueller will be there later. I do think that they win maybe around 105, but it all comes down to the postseason. That's when it's going to matter the most, and I will love to see them fail again. Speaking of the postseason, Chris Torres, shout out to Chris. They're going to defer their World Series. Very, 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 very good comment. Might be my favorite comment of the whole chat. Um, Jimbo, the Dodgers, my friend, over a hundred and. Well, excuse me, over or under 103 and a half. Yeah, I mean, I just think they, they they easily could have like one of those like 2023 Braves types of offensive years this yeah. year. I mean, Mookie Betts, he, he, I mean, he said it, Mookie Betts, um, Freddie Freeman, Shohei. And I mean, you they added Teoscar Hernandez. Mm -hmm. Who could just go out, hit 30, 35 home runs. Um they have young guy. They have young guys. James Outman. I mean, Max Muncie is gonna strike out 150 times to still get you 30 bombs somehow. Yeah. Um, and that rotation, you know, once again has to stay healthy, which has been their problem. But I mean, if they're healthy, they win. You know, 105 games easily. Oh, sure. Maybe more than that if they just go on one of those runs. But two overs, one yeah. under. Keyshawn, yeah. over or under for the Los Angeles Dodgers. This is tough because, like, I could see them, like, doing what Jimbo's saying and just win, like, 108 games, 110 games. But I'll just say – I'll, I'll say under because 104 is predicting. Yeah. But this team, we're not – we don't care about the regular season with this team. We only care about the playoffs because this team – is the notorious regular season team. They'll win all the games. They'll look amazing. They'll look like the best team in baseball for a majority of the season. And then they'll face the power of friendship and lose. <laughs> and it happens every oh, shit. year crazy. with them. So I, yeah, I, over under with this team doesn't really matter to me. I'll just take the under because it's just hard to predict that many wins. But playoffs is where we're most paying attention absolutely. to that lineup and that team. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know what, to, to back Anthony's point, even if they do go over, to see them go over and like have 110 wins and then to just flame out in the playoffs, I might sign up for that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just just for entertainment yeah. value, shock value. Next team, you gentlemen are gonna love this one. 
The Miami Marlins, 78 and a half, over under. Me and my brother have stated many times that this is the team we need to target. Not the Braves, not the Phillies. We need to just lower the expectations just a bit and make sure we are above them. We bring back the fact that we're never going to be below this team. I try my best to take my Mets cap off with this team because obviously I don't like them. I want to be better than them. I think 78 wins is a good mark, so I'm going to say under. Keyshawn. 78. I'll probably say over. Okay. Over like 80 wins. And like oh, 80, gosh. 81 wins. I think they'll hover around 500 for a majority of the season. And I think it'll stay like that. Um, this is not my Mets hat on either. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think that they, they're a good team, but they just, it's, it's, they have a better lineup than they did last year with the pieces that they added. I just think that their, their pitching is weird. Like they have so many good pitchers. But I feel like they fall apart pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Like they find a way to just usage unravel. Rate. Yeah, it's the usage rate because they're relying so much on them, and the offense doesn't hit enough for them. Mm -hmm. I just think that they burn themselves out come like June or August or whatever. So good point. I think I, I'll go. I'll probably go over, but it's not a confident over. Gotcha. So. Jimbo, Miami, seventy-eight yeah, and a half. It's a weird team. It's one of those teams I think that I don't think any team in the league wants to play. Yeah. But Very they good could, point. They could not. They could win like 79 games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, it's it, it's a, it, it just lacks consistency. You just got a lot of volatile guys in their lineup. Just They can go on a stretch where they just lose 10 in a row, and then they could like win 10 in a row. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. just depending on how their lineup is feeling that day. They have just not a lot of stability. Um, that's why... I'm probably leaning under, mm -hmm. but once again, it's just a team that you don't really want to see in your schedule. And I mean, Mets fans have seen it year in and year out. Oh, that yeah. just come in with their random guys that just beat us for no reason. But, right. Total bogey team, hundred percent for us. Anthony, over under on the Miami Marlins, seventy eight and a half. Yeah, that there. This is a this is a this is one of the tougher ones because. Um, I think they have a really scrappy lineup. You know, you put Luis Arise at the top and he just terrorizes every freaking at bat that he has. Yeah. Um, do you have hopes for the rotation with Lazardo and Yuri Perez and Edwin Cabrera? But then you like you throw in AJ Puck, who was a relief pitcher um last season. So I, I don't know what they're doing there. Um I am going to go with under at around 78 wins. Oh, okay. I think they could, I, they could go over to what they were saying about 79 wins, but um, se I'm going to have them at 78 wins. I think they're going to regret letting go of Kim Ang. I know that's, it's mm, yeah. not a, not a Very player, good. but oh, yeah. Kim Ang as the general manager, uh, I think that that's going to be a regret. Great she was point. building, she was building a really mm -hmm. nice thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great point. I want to point out a comment in the chat. Uh, David made a good point. If Miami signs J.D. Martinez, the target of the Mets currently, it would be a big get. And I think if yeah, that, that will, I think it would be an over for me. I would yeah. have to yeah. lead him towards over. Um, great comment, Anthony. I mean, David, appreciate you. Um, next team. Um, interesting. The Milwaukee Brewers, 77 and a half. I feel like we're in the we're getting near the like the real, like, ugh, I don't know. Um Honestly, I losing Corbin Burns. Now they lost Devin Williams. I think they should have blown it up in the winter. They should have traded Willie Adamas. I mean, Kristen Yelich, can he stay healthy again? I think, and they have a really good bullpen, but now they got it. It's going to be a lot different. They're going to have to deal with the stuff we dealt with with Edwin Diaz, not for the whole year, obviously, but, you know, Devin Williams has a broken back, you know, so God, God bless him. Hope he heals well. I have to say under. I just feel like there's bad mojo on this team. I really do. Um, Keyshawn, Milwaukee, 77 and a half over under? They lost so much that I can't. I really cannot see them, like, even contending for a playoff spot, like where they were last year. Um, so I'm I'm going to take the under. I think uh, losing Council, because Council was there for a long time. Like, yeah. I, we may not think he's a good coach. But that matters in culture, the big time culture, yeah. yeah. Especially with like a, a locker room like this, who's kind of like bringing in some younger guys. You have to build some sort of culture, and not having a guy who created, you know, something good there, help mm -hmm. create something good there. Um, I think that plays a part. 
Yelich is a big question mark. He he had a month, I think, last year where he raked, and we just didn't see it for for a majority of the year. Um, yeah, no, I think this is an under. I don't think they'll be a good team. Um, but who knows? They're the Milwaukee Brewers. They they find a way. Like they really yeah. do. Jimbo, seventy-seven and a half. Yeah, I. This is another one of those teams I just don't really like watching uh, day in day out. I, I don't man, I don't know, man. Like it's just, it's just especially it's with like cool. the regression of even Christian Yelich. Yeah, it's just like, it's just like ah, they just don't, they, they just don't have a lot of guys that excite me. It used to be Willie Adams, but he took a giant step back last year. And yeah. I mean, Devin Williams now isn't there yet. Yeah, Corbin Burns isn't there. You know, Randall Woodruff is hurt. Huh? They don't have Rowdy Telez. That was another guy they relied on a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, he regressed a lot last he did. year. He did. He did. Yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, you needed him. You needed him in the middle of your lineup. Um, Freddie Peralta, I think, is a really, really good pitcher. Um, yes. But I mean, after him, that rotation is a lot to be desired. Yeah, you know, obviously, yeah. I mean, Woodruff is hurt. Yeah, he's hurt. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, yeah. I think I think they ran into a lot of bad luck. Yeah. Um, at the same time, they had a lot of, you know, young guys coming up that, you know, aren't really doing what they need to do. Like in a, in a great world, you know, Christian Yelich is that MVP guy. Willie Adamas, you know, has his footing. Then you get Jackson Chorio and you're a really good team. But they got hit with injuries. They got hit with some underperformance. I just, I just don't really think they're going to win 77 games. They're going to win more like 74, 75. I um, agree. But No, I agree totally. Yeah. And Tough one, Brewers. Tough one. Brewers, your prediction over <laughs> under 77 and a half. It's crazy to think that they they did pull out 92 uh, wins last year. You take Corbin Burns out of that, you can scratch 10 wins right off. So now they're at 82. Yep. Uh, you look at them losing Craig Council. I know you mentioned you're not a big fan of him. Neither am I. But you know he wills an important part of that you know organization for such a long time and carrying them to the playoffs. Yep. Throw another five wins out or six wins out of there. So now they're right around 77. You know, he was at the back of the rotation. Now he's at ours. But Adrian Hauser, who yeah. I, you know, have like kind of deemed Rick Reed, uh, Rick Reed <laughs> um, that's like another, you know, seven or eight wins. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm no going under. I'm, I'm going under with Milwaukee. There's nothing in that roster that really impresses me. I mean, your catcher is Gary Sanchez. <laughs> they have Contreras, the guy who loves to take Edwin Diaz's music, you know, but I just. I think that this team really missed a window of opportunity to just they did. blow it up and start over the way the Mets did. And I know they have really good prospects. I know they have some of the best prospects in baseball, but they really would have benefited by really just accepting what it is and just letting those kids eventually come up. But yeah, um, we're going to move on. We're almost at the tail end of the league. I know we've been here a while, but thank you for 215 people still being yes. here with us. Do That's not forget, nice. the more people that stay in this chat, your credit score does go up 200 points. <laughs> One's up in the chat for the bloodline of the Mets fans. Shout sure. out to all you lovely people. The Minnesota Twins, 86 and a half. I like them. I don't like them that much. I'm going under. Anthony, your thoughts? Uh, with the Twins, they're really the class of that division, and um, there's no, there's really no one else. They won 87 last year. Um, I think they hover around that area, around the you know 85 to 87 range. Maybe they could get to to 89. Um. Hmm. This, this is like a, the, the Miami one for me. Hmm. Uh, I will say, I will say over around 87 wins, 87, 88, because their division's terrible. And, you know, the American League does not have that many great teams in it. I agree. I, I think it's a battle between them and the Tigers in some way, you know, mm -hmm. in some weird way. Keyshawn, Minnesota Twins, 86 and a half over under. I'll take, I'll take the over. Nice. Okay. I think they'll win like around 88 games just because that division is not good. Um, and I don't know, man, like you, they always find a way to recover from the Byron Buxton injury. That happened yeah. Byron Buxton finds a way to get injured every single year. And yet they find a way to recoup. And even when they're not, you know, like a great team, um, they still, um, so yeah, I I'll take the over. 
Uh, Jimbo, 86 and a half. Minnesota Twins. I, the thing about the Twins is, man, it's going to come down to that pitching staff once again. I just don't think they have enough guys that you really feel confident in. Um, but I don't know. I think mid-80s, mid mid-80s. 86 and a half just seems way too high. For me, I think they're close to like an 84, 85 win I agree. team that could like sneak into the playoffs, something like that. Um, I think that's also going to compete in that division. Um, you know, just not a lot there. But um, yeah, I mean, does Byron Buxton stay on the field and, you know, give you some production um, with all of his injuries? Because we don't know if he. Don't they, the isn't their third baseman yeah. supposed to be finally healthy? He he went off in the playoffs. Oh my God, his name uh, is. Royce Lewis, Royce, Royce Lewis. Lewis. If, 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 they, they, they do have they do have a lot of guys that I really they, like. I like, got the three hundred dollars, three hundred million dollar man. Also, oh god, you know what I'm we don't got to name his name. Oh god, <laughs> good lord. I will say this: they might have the best bullpen in baseball. Might I think their bullpen is incredible? They have like three guys that like I'm just like wow. You know, like watching them last year against the Astros play a very analytical game. I was actually very, very impressed the way they were mix matching with the bullpen when they did bullpen games in the playoffs. I mean, they they lost the game by like one or two runs, but they were really, really trying their best to just play matchups. And it kind of worked, to be fair. They lost. So some would say it didn't work, but they didn't have a starter to go past like four or five innings. So they just decided to just play a bullpen game. And I, I, I think accepting what you are is something that a lot of major league baseball teams choose to ignore. So I like that they stood to their guns. I, I appreciate that. I like their manager too. I know he's a very analytically driven manager, but um, I think that I, I I enjoy watching their brand of baseball a lot more than like the Brewers for that matter. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right, gentlemen, we're at that point of the show. There's not much to say. The New York Metropolitans. All right, ladies and gentlemen, they got us at 81 and a half. Now this has been the talk. Me and my brother have tried our best to stay away from this, this conversation mainly, because this is a huge talking point in Metland. Are they going to win 81 games? Are they going to win more than 75 games? Are they going to lose more than 80-something? Uh, like, it's always a conversation. You log on to Twitter or any other app, and it's a conversation that's ongoing consistently. I am going to be that guy. I'm going to say it's a push. I think we're 81 and 81. And you know what? Sign me up. I will be very, very happy with an 81 and 81 year with what we've done in the offseason and the direction we're going. I am very okay being a 500 ball club. Anthony, our resident Met fan from forever, Mr. Subway to Shea, please, your prediction on the New York Metropolitans this season. Over or under 81 and a half? I do have them over. Nice. Um, I have them around uh, 82 to 84 wins. Uh, so I, I, I think that there, there are a lot of factors, right? There's a lot of ifs on the team, but if what we've been seeing from, from all these pieces in the bullpen and if they can work out, you know, Edwin Diaz immediately adds 10 more wins to your team. Uh, we missed that last season, yeah. Uh, especially when, when the bullpen kind of just flamed out, uh, Adam Adovino had his, you know, tough time closing out games. <laughs> There's a lot to prove from from this rotation, right? You got four guys in the rotation: Severino, Manaya, uh, Adrian Hauser, and who's the fourth one? I'm forgetting. Uh, I'm forgetting my own rotation. Talk about them every day: Severino, McGill, Hauser, Quintana. Quintana. That's the other one that I was thinking of. All four of those guys are in their free agent walk year. Their lives are on the line here Absolutely. for a contract. Absolutely. So they're going to have to prove themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, I do see them pitching very well. If they, if they can at least give us five innings, that's all. All you need is five innings from these guys. Five. If you could get a six, even better. But if they could do that, you know, relieve the bullpen, I think we'll be all right. It's the offense that I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about because mm -hmm. now the kids are actually getting their moment here yep. there's 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 no we're bringing in jd davis there's no uh, <laughs> jd martinez is on the way or reese hoskins is going to be the guy none of that it's mark vientos it's brett Beatty. and if they don't succeed this year that's pr they're pr probably pretty much out uh, at that point 
So this is their time to give to 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 shine if they can, and if they do, at least one of them, at least one of them, if we can get to to give us some good offense, I will be excited about. But uh, I do have them. You know, there, there's too much veteran presence in that lineup with Pete on his on his whatever. And maybe it's on his way out, or maybe he resigns. But it's a free agent here. So you got Pete Lindor, Nimmo. I can't see. McNeil having a, another mid mediocre year. I think he bounces back. Uh, Marte definitely needs to bounce back. And then Francisco Alvarez, I think is going to take a, another leap. The star. I think this is the year. This year is the Francisco Alvarez year. I really do. I really believe that Jimbo over or under for the New York Metropolitans, the team we love to drown our sorrows in my brother, 81 and a half. Um, I'm over on the Mets. Oh, I'm over on the Mets, and it's go. and it's hard. It's it's hard I to take. Fucking love my, what I'm hearing. It's hard to take my Mets hat off when I talk about the Mets, but leave it on for all the reason you guys uh, talked about. I think it's a lot of guys that are trending up on this team. I think we had saw a lot of down years. Once again, it was like a team with like that stench over them, like a, like a team like the Cardinals or something like that. Um, I think it's a lot of guys that are trending up. I think Pete Alonso is going to have a better year than he had last year. I think Lindor is going to have a better year than he did had last year, especially at the plate. Um, I think McNeil is going to have a better year. Alvarez is going to have a better year. You hope you get better out of that Beatty and Mark Vientos. God, please, please. Um, but you're getting called out in the comments right now, Jimbo. Just building has to right tease now. us before every prediction. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Welcome to YouTube. <laughs> oh, you're getting love now. Look at this. Look from Patty. Look at this. Look, you're getting love. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Nah, but I am over because I think I think we just have a lot of guys, even guys like Luis Severino. Like I think these guys that I think they know that they're better than they were last year. And I think they're going to go out there and try to prove it this year. Um, so I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I I think they're better than 81 and a half points. I'll okay. say that. All I'll right, let me get to Grumpy over here. 81 and a half, Grumpy. <laughs> he's fighting it. Look, he's fighting it, Anthony. Look at him. Look at him. Ooh, 81 and a half, man. <laughs> Listen, you all made a lot of wonderful points, a lot of great points. Um, I kind of want to be devil's advocate here on some of the points that were made, but I'm not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Power of positivity. Um. 81 and a half, I think this team hovers between kind of like what Ant said, where it's 81 to 83 wins. I kind of see it as more like 78 to 82. Mm -hmm. That's where I see the range of this team. I'm gonna that was my low. I'm yeah, I'm gonna say over because I love the Mets and I'm just gonna be a fucking homer. Um, but I think uh to a lot of the points that were made, there are a lot of guys on this team that they might not be playing baseball again. And I think that that plays a, a significant part in, you know, a team. And a guy like Mendy, who is so personality driven, creating relationships with guys and trying to understand players, I think that makes you want to play for a guy like that. And if you are on your last legs of your career, you need a guy like that to go to war with. I agree with that. Um, percent. With that being said, there are questions to the lineup. I don't like the back end of the lineup at all. I hate it. I hate what's going on at third base. I genuinely despise the fact that we're doing this and we could have gotten better in the past and or we could have just, I don't know, create, uh, made this option easier on ourselves last year, but we didn't. Mm -hmm. And um, Very good point. You know, I, I think Marte, McNeil are probably the most uh, important pieces in the lineup because percent agree with you they they're gonna tell us whether we are able to become a playoff team and make that next step or if they're just gonna you know be what they were last year and just let the rest of the lineup fall apart me we're all high on francisco alvarez but that's a lot to put on a kid's shoulders to be the protection for pete alonzo that we all envision him possibly being for him to do that in year two it's kind of difficult. A guy like McNeil, a guy like Marte could help ease him into that. Um, so, yeah, I think Nimmo, Lindor, Alonzo, they're going to be great this year as always. I think Sugar's going to look 
the same old sugar that we saw. We saw it this week. You know what I'm saying? We saw we saw him strike out three people in a row, strike out the side. Um, he makes a difference. We talked about it before this. Um, D Rob, when we traded D Rob, we lost about we blew what the most saves. 19. 19. 19. You adding the best closer in baseball this year. So I know that it sucked last year without him. It matters this year. And I think um the bullpen is looking great in spring training. Starting pitching is looking great. Obviously, spring training doesn't matter to the president of baseball operations. Mm-hmm. But funny. To, his, so funny that to his plan, to his plan and what he's implementing and the the lab and what Hefner is trying to preach to the guys, everything bodes well. So I'm going to say over. I think this team will be in that graphic, which I love that graphic, that in the hunt graphic. Oh, yeah, that's some Y graphic in the hunt. I love that. I love when the Jets are in there for two games a season. You know what I'm saying? So I think think the Mets are going to hover around that area. I think they'll win 82 games. Oh, all right. So I was the negative, Nancy. Good Lord. Wow. All right. All right. right. Well, you know what? Good vibes. I like the positivity. I actually do think that matters. I think a clubhouse needs that. And I think that um, every one of you gentlemen made amazing points. One thing I do want to bring up that no one else brought up. And I know know we talked about third. We talked about Mendy. Talked about Edwin Diaz. I want to talk about the fact that this team has a brand new, just a brand new president that has said, like, yo, I believe in this team. And to me... For a guy to do that and just stick his neck out and oh, these are the moves I made, he and he keeps like, on saying it, like, yo, I like what I see. I believe and, it. And you know what I'm saying? And he stuck to his guns, too, I right? Know. Like, he has not let any of the fan chatter or anything. Yeah. It's the kids are going to get the opportunity, yep. and that's it. We're going to yep. go with this group, and that's it. And, and that that's – he's the, really the biggest uh, acquisition of the offseason. Him. Mendy, and you could throw mm-hmm. John Gibbons in there as well. Those, that group is mm-hmm. is going to be huge moving forward. Well, good. That's the best point. Yeah. I think those three guys, as like a three headed like collective, I think the the, the clubhouse is just going to be in a better in better spirits. Yeah. The Mets are better when they don't have expectations. The Mets are way better when they don't have expectations. Yeah. What are you saying, Jimbo? That's right. I was saying like if, if you if you like reverse back to one year ago. Um, right now, you would have wanted them to just give the reins to Brett Beatty and Mark Vientos at third base. Right. I was ready. I was. I, I wasn't ready to put Eduardo Escobar at third base. Mm-hmm. Yeah. After twenty twenty, after twenty twenty two, even though you know he, he was decent, but you know, we wanted right. to see Brett Beatty start. Uh, you know, on the opening day. Yeah. Starting opening day at third base last year. Yeah. So I mean, and I think that's why too that his mentality was shaken. Yes, he earned yeah. out of spring training. He yeah. earned third base, and he got screwed out of that. Yep, and that totally changed him for the rest of the year. And I, yeah, I, I think, oh, okay, yeah. go ahead, go ahead, Jim. Please continue. You're, you're you, we're giving guys, I think, the keys. We're like Alvarez has the keys. You know, Brett Beatty is now getting the keys at least to start. I don't know how long they're going to give his leash, but you know, they're saying they're trusting in him. Right. Um. So I mean, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. I think I, I just think the Mets are set up to at least overperform what they did last year. Do they get to 82 wins? Do they get to 83 wins? Who knows? But they're going to be better. They're going to be better. So, Shout out to Odd Villain in the chat. I love this comment. I keep telling myself we're going to be whack. Last time I said that was 2015. Yo, that is the point. best mindset of anything, of any, like, better than anything I've said, man. Shout out to you, brother. Shout out to everyone. Shout out to Edgardo. Thank you guys for making the amazing group. Keep up the good work. Yo, man, honestly, we're we're almost two hours in. I know, taking a lot of your time. Um, we're gonna rapid fire. We got a few more teams, and then we're done. There's 220 people still here. All your credit scores are going up. That's it. Put Ooh, the ones up in the chat. You know what I'm saying? Funny. We almost batted Pete Alonso's average. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Like, look at that. oh no, he did. All right, here oh, we go. <laughs> we just spent a lot of good time talking about the Mets. We all seem a lot of uh, very upbeat. Um, Positive vibes, right? Uh, things are kind of looking good compared to last year. Um, you know, great point my brother made the other day. Last year, we even had a rain out for opening day. It was just like everything that went wrong. Everything, you know what I'm saying? You know, um, when things go wrong at the beginning of the season, um, it kind of like tri- – in baseball, it's weird. They continue the trickle through the season. And I just want to 
do an interesting segue. Being on such a high in December compared to being on such a low in March, do the Yankee fans know how that feels? I think they do, and they have a 91 and a half mark. This is a very interesting number because Garrett Cole is slated to at least miss two months of baseball. Um, Aaron Judge, I'm a huge Aaron Judge fan, but apparently he's worn down. We don't know what to expect from Aaron Judge. They got one of the best players in Major League Baseball, Juan Soto, but I know every Yankee fan will want Juan Soto, healthy Judge, healthy Garrett Cole. Is this going to be a year where Juan Soto has to carry broken pieces of the Yankees organization through a rental year and then leave? We don't know. We speculate. Possible. 91 and a half wins in maybe the best division in Major League Baseball. Anthony, our crosstown rivals, over or under for the New York Yankees? And this is not me being a Yankee hater. I'm going under Ooh. at around 89 to 90 wins. I still oh, think that okay. they can they can, you know, get there. I don't think it's they're going to go over that. You have to, and we know this. We've experienced this as Mets fans. They have to tread lightly with this Garrett Cole injury Absolutely. because if he comes back and somehow some way this injury gets worse, and he has to have Tommy John surgery, and then they miss him for another year, that's going to be a huge problem. I don't trust Carlos Rodon. Marcus Stroman is a you know a 500 pitcher to me. I mean, I, I don't know. He has the talent to be better, but I think he gets into his own head. I don't know if it's going to fit. We already see them complaining on on you know the radio that he's not taking the ball on opening day like it, it it's just it, i don't think this is going to work out like the way they want it to i like nestor cortez I, I think he's one of the good ones even the aaron judge injury right like that abdomen area all that reminds me of is max scherzer and that was a six to eight week recovery yes it was, on top yeah. of that he's still feeling the effects on his foot which could become chronic this is a little bit concerning to me not trying to be a Yankee hater, but everyone thought that last season when they finished 82 and 80, that was the realization that things needed to change. I think that was just fog. I think this year, if they struggle, is big time for Brian Cashman. Oof, I, oh, man, that was well put. I, I, that was almost as well put as Susie's prediction. <laughs> <laughs> I love this girl. She's so funny. Jimbo, the, the Bronx yeah. Bombers, 91 and a half, my friend. Over on yeah. There. I think losing Garrett Cole was probably the worst thing that could have ever happened yeah. to the Yankees. I, I think that elbow injury, is it's devolved so much from it was initially, oh, it's not that big of a deal, to now he's out for one to two months but doesn't need surgery. That's – we. I mean, Mets fans know. We've – we 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 know what that means. We know what that means. That's one of the worst things you can. I'm not impressed by the rest of the rotation. Uh, Rodon is not what he was when he was wearing a Giants uniform. Marcus Stroman. I mean, I don't. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> Nestor Cortez. Who knows? Who knows? Like 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 this is just it's the, the their their pitching staff, um, including their bullpen, is just not impressive to me. Their lineup could make some noise. The lineup could take a step forward. Who who knows what happened with that Anthony Rizzo concussion thing and how much that affected him last year? Um, maybe he comes back better. Um, you know, Anthony Volpe, he's going to take a step forward. Um, young guy, Alex Verdugo, we'll see. Um, you're scared about Aaron Judge, but assuming he's healthy, um, you know, that is the only reason why this team, you know, could win 88, 89 games. Um, but if he's out, you this is, this is a bad team. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, who knows? Who knows? Get, losing Garrett Cole is a ginormous blow. I just don't see any way they went over 90 games without him. Yep. Over or under 91 and a half, Keyshawn. I'll say under, but just about by a game or two, like to Anne's point. I think this is going to be the funnest train wreck of the season. <laughs> um, they'll make it to the playoffs. They always do, or they'll find a way. But I don't know, man. Losing Garrett Cole is so, like, vital to what they have building there because it's like I'd rather lose Judge for two months than lose Garrett Cole. I'm going to be honest. And I know that one pitches every fifth day, but Garrett Cole has been such a workhorse. 
and like so good for them throughout their entire contract mm-hmm. that it just makes like it it, it it causes such a big blow for them if if Rondon is not pitching well, if Strowman is doing whatever Strowman does, if pitch well for a month or pitch well for three weeks and you know find a way or whatever. I'm not confident in them at all. Um, I don't know, man. Relying on DJ LeMayhew and like the corpse of like Giancarlo Stanton and like of Giancarlo Stanton. Jose, <laughs> you know, like you know, after Soto, that lineup just it just doesn't it it's not good enough. And they're relying on so many like they're relying on a lot of mid, a lot of bums. <laughs> Performative seasons, oh, just because they got Soto, and I know that Rizzo got hurt last year, and he was playing really well before he got hurt. <laughs> but like, man, like, I think to Ann's point, like, this is like the beginning of the fall, like, of everything, like, as the, like because th- this has train wreck written all over it, yeah, in like bright fucking letters. Yep. You have to remember too that they were they were on their way to that right at the beginning of the season they had a tough start they had yeah. a tough start last year and they were on their way to that and Garrett Cole and uh, Judge carried them out of that to make them a respectable eighty two and eight one thousand percent I couldn't yeah. agree more with you Jerry hey, another year of Boone another year of Cashman what bullshit uh, trade are they gonna make to 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 kind of convince themselves they could compete with the Astros. <laughs> Or the Rangers, they'll do it and they'll find a way to convince themselves. But like Trent Grisham, you know Verdugo, like this ain't this ain't a good team. I'm sorry. Like yeah. I, I just want to point it, out that one of my dark horses for National League Cy Young is Michael King. But you know, just putting it out there for petty vibes. You know what I'm saying? They should have kept him. They should. They needed him. They needed him badly. Or Luis um, Severino, maybe. Oh. I like that one too. Hey, hey. You, know, you know, I think mm-hmm. I'm telling you right now. I think what happened to us last year, where just things started to trickle in a weird way, is going to happen to them. And I hate to put that on anybody, but for them, I don't really give a f. Honestly, the point is, is that <laughs> Marcus Stroman, good luck after like June. God bless you, because it's usually around the midseason mark. He just turns into whatever he turns into. A lemon, a, a true lemon, and. <laughs> At that point in time, <laughs> if Marcus Stroman turns into a lemon and the Astros got Blake Snell on the mound, God bless your souls, honestly. But we almost at the two-hour mark. I want to rapid fire through the last few teams. We got about like 10 teams, some interesting, some not. Um, next one. Ah, man. We were talking about this before we even began. The Oakland A's at 56 and a half. Honestly, for a major league baseball team to be predicted at 56 wins is absolutely embarrassing. And you know what? The way it's going, I <laughs> think it's going to be the under. Eh, Keyshawn, your thoughts? That's so sad. That's an indictment on Rob Manfred if a team goes below 56 wins. Like, come on, bro. What are we doing? You got you to gotta step in and do something about that. I'm going to say over. Just because I do, I really hope it's not the under. So that's my only. <laughs> they signed JD Davis for whatever you that see was. See Ibby's comment. They, they JD Davis. They're gonna win 116 games. God bless. Vaya con Dios. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Where's the dove emojis? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jimbo, rapid fire. Oakland A's 56 and a half. My brother. I mean. I, I'll, I'll try not to be too negative on the A's, man. They have they do have a lot of like you know good young talent. I like Zach Geloff a lot. Me too. At second base, I like him a lot. Um, you know, they got the first round guy JJ Bade. Um, I liked him when he was in college. He was at Vanderbilt, but he hasn't really done it in the pros. Uh, but you know, still still a talented guy out there. Shane Engelier's uh, fun name to say. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how he is. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a good team. It's not a good team. Um, don't need to say more than that. Anthony, over on the 56 and a half. We're gonna go under. I need a team to break the Mets record of being terrible. I want oh, I want yeah. that I want that out of our out of our space forever. Let it be Amen. Oakland. Unfortunate for Oakland because it's been such a storied franchise for so long and they completely screwed it up. But uh, you know, this team literally have like rats in their booth for, for like radio and TV boots, man. Like yeah. you know, clean yeah. up. 
clean up over there. Yeah, they're actually putting their best pitcher, Mason Miller. Shout out to Ibby. Um, he was incredible with like his nine starts, but they're they're making him the closer now. So I don't know. Eh, whatever. Interesting. Next team, our rivals, the trash of Philadelphia at 90 and a half over under. I actually think personally, I think they're going to struggle this year. I don't know if it's going to be a big struggle, but I don't know if they reach the 90 mark. I think they're their biggest worst enemy, in my honest opinion. I think their bullpen is trash, and that's their biggest weak point, in my personal opinion. They're going to hit their way through games, and as hitting comes in Major League Baseball, comes in in, in many different variations of streaks, in good and in negative. Keyshawn, 90 and a half for the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, fuck the Phillies, first and foremost. 100%. I'm going to say under. I think they'll still be a playoff team. Yes. Um, and the Mets will still own them. So that'll help. Um, and, you know, like you said about the bullpen, the bullpen, they did have, like, uh, bullpen problems when the year that they went to the World Series and were able to overcome that with the hitting that they oh, had. Oh, we got to get – oh, we got a great guest here. Oh, no, we can leave him. Yeah. <laughs> Who is this amazing, beautiful guest? This is, uh, this is also Jimbo. Yeah. Oh, okay. Jimbo, Jimbo too. Jimbo, Jimbo Jr. Jimbo, Jimbo Jr. Jr. We like Jimbo Jr. here. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Jimbo Jr. We're big cats. Shout out Jimbo Jr. Shout out Jimbo Jr. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, um, no shouts out for Bryce Harper who was a pet <laughs> moving to first base well, and who got ranked above Pete Alonso on a rankings list. What type of shit are we doing with that? But ridiculous. regardless of that, I don't think uh, this team. I think they're 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 always going to be pretenders. They always will be. They have a great lineup, but that's about it. That's where it stops. So. Yeah. Uh, Anthony, I know you love the Phil- talking about Philadelphia Philly baseball. Ninety yeah. and a half wins for the Phillies. So. Yeah, I I unfortunately have them over. I have them around ninety two to ninety three wins. Um, okay. They re-sign Aaron Nola. They uh, re up Zach Wheeler. I think that's huge for them mm-hmm. uh, to to keep the, those guys intact and, and in the rotation and. They're going to get a full season out of Bryce Harper because remember that he missed mo- uh, a month or two, I think, or maybe it was just a couple of weeks. I don't know. Like that, yeah. He he missed some time with the elbow like six injury. Six weeks or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think that with a fully healthy Bryce Harper, they get around 92, 93 wins. And no, he's not a better first baseman than Pete Alonso. Let's get that out right now. Amen to that, brother. Amen to that. Interesting how we see the Philadelphia yeah. season unfold as it pertains to us. You know what I'm saying? Because I I feel very confident in. Finn finishing above the Marlins it's then when we actually know we're finishing above the Marlins immediately as my fans we look at the Phillies so um that'll be an interesting team to watch another interesting team the Pittsburgh Pirates they improved a lot they added a lot a lot of Steve Cohen's money has went into this organization as we know why um they have the return of O'Neill Cruz the, the 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 better prospect alleged you know in the past highly ranked um, I feel like they are always the funnest team in baseball. I feel like they're the only team in baseball that wins and losses like kind of don't matter because they're just fun. I don't know if they're good, but they're fun. And I remember when they were good, it was so much fun. So yeah. I'm rooting for them. I'm just going to say over because I like them. Keyshawn. Um, I'm, I love Key Brian Hayes. Amen. He's one of the best third basemans in the league, especially with the glove. I think he might be on that Nolan Arenado tier soon, like of having like a pristine third base glove. Um, they've added. I love um, Paul Skeens, if I'm saying his name correctly. He we is something, him. man. Yeah, he's he's unreal. Going one on one, one on two. His movement, like I, I re- I hope they're good. I hope they're good because. I like Brian Reynolds. Like, there's so many players I like on that team that I just really hope they're good. And then the vibes, the fans, like, that park when it's lit up at night. It, it just – that that team, like, if they're good, I think it, it'll be good for baseball mm-hmm. to see, like, one – like, another Arizona Diamondbacks, just not the same team, just with a different – you know, having that be Pittsburgh, that would, that would be really dope. So, yeah. 
I'm I'm rooting for them. I really like uh, Pittsburgh. We might make the trip this year. Mm -hmm. We might. I think, just, we'll, I think they'll get the over. At the gorgeous way. stadium. We might make the trip this year. Just I saw Ibby say that Ibby, if we do, you know, we'll coordinate something. But it, I think that's a baseball park. I I, I have to see it. But uh, yeah. rapid fire, gentlemen, Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, Anthony, seventy four and a half. I'll go over too. Like it's crazy that two of the teams that I'm looking forward to most to seeing play come out of the central in the Reds and the Pirates. The youth mm -hmm. that they both have coming yeah. through is nice. Obviously, they have the veteran in Andrew McCutcheon, who's like uh, you know, like the mayor there uh in Pittsburgh. So that's nice to see. I like the addition of Martin Perez uh, as one of their rotation yeah. pieces as well. And they added the uh, Mr. Oh. Weirdo Aroldis Chapman uh to the uh <laughs> oh, to the bullpen, but hey, I, I think that's for another show. Or something. <laughs> hey, yo. But uh yeah, man. I, I like I like this stuff for the Pirates. A little over, maybe around you know 77, 78 wins. Okay. That'll be fun year for them. Jimbo. Uh, yeah. It's going to be a really interesting year. I think, uh, one, I have them over. I'm, I'm high on the Pirates. I really like what they built out there. Um, I think them losing O'Neal Cruz was kind of the dagger. They really needed him in their lineup and just on their defense. He was a, he, He's a key piece to what makes that team work. Um, I also, but what I want to focus on, I think he is probably going to win out in the Ellie De La Cruz versus O'Neal Cruz debate there in the NL Central. Maybe that's a hot take. I don't know. Which one um, you said he's going to win? I think O'Neal. I think O'Neal. I agree. Is going to be the better yeah. one. Uh, I agree. I agree. And I, but I, I, and I think being able to watch that rivalry um, for a few years is going to just be very, very fun. Um, I mean, we'll see, and we'll see what happens when they have Paul Skeens to that uh, rotation with Mitch Keller. Um, uh, there, that back end of the bullpen is also really good. You can see them make a little bit of a run. Maybe they're a year or two away, um, but they have a lot of young guys that I really like. Um, and yeah, I think 78, 79. I do think they're over oh, wow. 74 and a half. Though. I think that's too low. That'd be All great right. for them, honestly. Uh, real yeah. quick, Susie, I just want to speak for uh, my Dominican people who I am not Dominican. I'm Puerto Rican. So is my brother. So is aunt. But I know a lot of Dominicans and he's Cuban, by the way. And I know enough Cuban people. Um, I don't know any Spanish families that do what Aroldo Chapman does at his own private time. So may God bless him and whatever they do at home. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. <laughs> the San Diego Padres, who uh, bolstered their rotation with Dylan Cease very recently. At our, they might be our bit outside of the NL East. I'm looking at the Cubs. I'm looking at the Padres as wild card teams that we have to focus on if we are going to have that very much improved season. They are at 83 and a half. Gentlemen, over or under the Padres. I actually, I think they're going to be around this number. I'm having a hard time. Staying with 83 or going over, um, I think 83 is a great number for them. I'm going to just say 83. Keyshawn, your thoughts? I think they go over, um, but, man, they they could be a train wreck. Like, they're mean that can just fall apart really quickly. Cease, they just got him, so that plays. So I'll go over, but I'm not confident. So I'll probably say, like, 85, 84, around there. Okay. Okay. Anthony, 83 and a half for the Padres. On the West yeah. Coast. I'm right in line with key. I think it's a uh, over around a, uh, you know, 83 to 85 wins. I like the rotation. I'm concerned yeah. a little bit about the lineup being another year older. Obviously Fernando Tatis jr. Is a, you know, star. Uh, but I, I do worry about like the mix with man, and Machado. I haven't heard like great things about the clubhouse with him being involved. So I don't know if that's a thing still or, or what, um, but around, right around 84, uh, 83 to 85 wins, because that's a tough division, man. Diamondbacks, even the Giants have got a little bit better. And then obviously you have the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. um, Jimbo, 83 and a half, Padres. Um, I don't know. I like the Padres. I like okay. the Padres. I think, I think 83 and a half is a little low for this team. Um, I mean, who knows how that clubhouse is going to mesh. Maybe they had too many stars in the room. And that's why they were underperforming last year. But I mean, that infield is still Xander Bogarts, Manny Machado, and you still have Fernando Tatis in the outfield. I really like Hey Sun Kim. Um, Jake Cronenworth had a down year. Who knows if he's going to do what he used to do? But I mean, he's still a guy that has put together some productive seasons. Um, I, I, I like the Padres. I think their rotation is now improved. Um, we'll see if that bullpen uh, can give you anything. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like the Padres. I think. They have a well put together team. I think they just kind of need to mesh and figure out 
what's going on internally. But I think I think they'll be better than 83 and a half. Wins for sure. All right. All right. We're at the tail end of the MLB teams. This has been amazing. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Yes. 237 right. here. Big up to every single one of you. Uh, the Seattle Mariners are at 87 and a half over under in a division that includes the Houston Astros and the Texas Rangers returning World Series champions. I am pretty high on the Mariners. I think they have the best pitching top to bottom in Major League Baseball. Um, their rotation is fun, young, and very exciting. I think they have one of the very best players in Major League Baseball, Julio Rodriguez. Um, they definitely added a little bit more bump into the lineup. Um, I think 88 wins is probably the mark. Um, I think they're going to be a little bit better than Texas. I think all three teams make the playoffs, though, this year. I'm going with over on the Seattle Mariners due to the pitching. Keyshawn, yeah, Mariners. Um, I, I'm going to say push on 87. Okay. I think all three teams, to your point, make it to the playoffs. I don't. I think we get an ALE situation with this division. Right. And all, all the teams, all three teams that matter in the division make it. Um, I love their pitching. I love um, watching, you know, Castillo and uh, what was the other kid? Kirby. Kirby, uh, Gilbert, Castillo. Gilbert. Yeah, they're, they're, they're really, it's just their lineup. Their lineup really doesn't move me after, you know, Jose. I mean, there's some pieces there, but, like, I really do think they could use, like, a really formidable bat. And I would have loved to see them get Juan Soto, but obviously that wasn't going to happen. So, um, push. I'll say push. They're a playoff team. I wanted them to get Bellinger. Um, before we go to these amazing gentlemen, we have to get our fifth member on the panel um, who has been with us for the past two hours because she's freaking amazing. Her thoughts. Susie's thoughts on the Mariners. There we go. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Anthony, the Mariners are at 87 and a half. My brother, talk to me. Yeah, I uh, I think they're going to be really good. I'm going to go over right with you. We're right around 88, 89 wins. Uh, this, I, I'm just looking at the rotation now, like for the first time. I think this may be my favorite rotation. Luis Castillo, George Kirby, Logan Gilbert, Bryce Miller, and Brian Wu. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's like that's legit five man rotation right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's old school. Like yeah, five, mm -hmm. got five formidable names. In in mm -hmm. in a perfect world, I can see them overtaking Texas and getting that second spot. Very because very at some point we know we are going to see the Degrom Scherzer injury. Th like it, it, that's got to affect them at some point in time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, it'd be nice to see these these five just. I don't know, ball out. I, I'm interested to watch every game that yeah. Seattle, like this rotation, is in. Could you imagine this rotation versus like the Orioles lineup? Oof, would be amazing. That series, wow. Seattle and Baltimore, it's gonna musty baseball. Um, Jimbo, 87 and a half, my brother. Uh, yeah. Once again, I like I like the Mariners. I like the Mariners a lot. Um, I really like their addition of Mitch Garver. Um, I think that yeah. I, I really think that's going to add some thump, um, especially if he can stay healthy because um, he can, you know, catch. I think they're just going to have him in the DH spot um, and maybe back up uh, Cal Raleigh. I mean, they also have Sebi Savala there, but, you know, their catch situation is interesting. But I like them. And they have, you know, Julio Rodriguez. I think he had a little bit of a sophomore slump last year, got a better year this year. Um, once again, you guys um, beat it, but that rotation is could be one of the best in baseball. Um, legitimate ace and just really no gaps from one through five um, with a still solid bullpen, even though they lost Paul Seawald, which is crazy to say um, that losing <laughs> Paul Seawald is a loss. But um, yeah, no, this is one of the, this, this is one of the more fun teams to watch in baseball. Um, yeah. I'm excited to watch their games. So hundred percent San Francisco giants, gentlemen, 81 and a half, same mark as the Mets. Um, I know they added Jordan Hicks into their starting rotation. Um, I know they had a young who Lee as their leadoff hitter. Um, they've been in the mix to try and get a lot of other names. It's been tough to get free agents to go to San Francisco. Um, they added Matt Chapman, world famous Matt Chapman, Matt legend, Matt Chapman. Um, I think they are a 500 ball club. I think this is a push at 81 for me. Anthony, your thoughts on the San Francisco Giants. I like how Anthony's yeah. always muted for the bad teams. That's the best part about it. <laughs> He's awesome. He doesn't. No one gives a fuck about the Giants. Let's be real. Thank you, though. 
<laughs> it's either it's either I'm muted or I got to clear my throat. I can't I can't decide which one I have, and I don't want that to go on air. Um, I think that yeah, I you know what I'm in agreement with you. Uh, push for San Francisco. Uh, right right there at 81 wins. It's just a tough division, man. It it, it really is, and they did do well in adding Soler and Chapman, but uh, the rotation has a lot left to be desired. That's I for agree. sure. Jimbo, 81 and a half for the Giants. Yeah, I got them somewhere between 78 to like 82 games, just like you guys kind of have. They're, they're mid. They're mid. They're, yeah. They don't really have much that excites you. Um, that rotation is just doesn't really move me at all. Um, Logan yeah, Webb is I pretty mean, good. Logan, yeah. Webb. Logan Webb's good. Logan Webb's good, but he's not, he, doesn't, he doesn't strike guys out. He's a guy that relies a lot on his defense. Um, yeah, I mean – They'll be okay. They'll be okay. okay. They're just not a team to be excited about. Keyshawn, the Gigantes of San Francisco, 81 and a half. I'm going to say under. Um, I think it's too many volatile pieces in that lineup that they'll have a good year one year, and then they'll stink the next. And I'm not sure if a lot of those guys actually want to be in San Francisco. <sighs> um and well, I, imagine going from San Francisco to Oakland. That's a whole nother discussion. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I just, uh, they, they're in a tough division, right? Um, that plays a part, obviously, with the Dodgers being so good, Arizona, um, San Diego. I don't see them making the playoffs. I, I tend to think that they'll probably hover around like 75 wins. Um, okay. I don't like the, the bullpen, the offense. It just seems like. A lot of those guys are coming off of good seasons to get paid. Yeah, and they're gonna they're gonna regress. So mm. I I kind of hope they do. It leaves us more of a path to the wild card. We're yeah. in our final five. We made it, gentlemen. Final five teams. A team that I actually do not like to root for or anything is the St. Louis Cardinals. I am hoping for a continued long regression for this team. They added everyone over the age of 35. They took a page out of the early days of Steve Cohen with the Mets, <laughs> adding a whole lot of age to that rotation. I honestly am all for this team just absolutely shitting the bed. To me, this is the easiest under of this whole list. I am going under. Keyshawn, your thoughts on the birds? Same. Fuck the birds. Fuck the red birds. I'll take the under gladly. 84 Absolutely. And half, 84 and a half is way too high. Absolutely. Life. I think they're winning like 73, 74 games. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah, I don't think much of them. Jimbo, the, the cards for you, brother. Yeah, they got a lot of whiplash in that rotation. Just a lot of guys are gonna be turning their neck real fast uh during the season. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, yeah, man. Lance uh Lance Lynn, Steven Max is in that rotation, just Guys, I'm I, I don't like, and mm -hmm. yeah, I just I don't know. It's 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 a weird team with a lot of guys that are on regression. I mean, you can get excited about Mason Wynn, but he's not a bat, um, really. I mean, you know, he can be serviceable, but he's more of a defensive guy. Um, yeah, not a lot to be excited about. Also, Under. I agree. Also, if we yeah. can get our fifth member of the panel, uh, Susie states the St. Louis rotation is made up of Ben Gay and vibes. I mean, that is just perfectly yeah. – she's she's on a roll today, I think. Like, Susie's not <laughs> missing at all. Good Lord. God bless Susie. Uh, Anthony, round us up with the St. Louis cards at 84 and a half, my brother. They definitely got that 84 and a half due to franchise history. I, I, I there's no agree. doubt about it. No That's doubt about it. Yeah. Kyle yeah. Gibson, Sonny Gray, and Lance Lynn. Sonny Gray is, you know, a decent pitcher outside of New York. But, like, those can be comparable to the signings that we made. And, yeah. and we're at 81. I'm going under on the Cardinals. Definitely under. under. I don't like Oli, uh, Ali Marmol. I, I can't stand him. Yeah. And thank goodness the Adam Wainwright saga is over. I, I don't ever want to see his name. I never want to see him again. Great pitcher, but I no, no so more. So cringe, right? Like, he, he's actually good in the booth. I actually do like it when he's calling games and pitching stuff. But, like, the, the guzzling that – Major League Baseball gave this brother last year. Oh, God. Thank God it is over. That is a great point. Ugh. All right, gentlemen. Um, the Antichrist of baseball, the Tampa Bay Rays, 84 and a half over or under. I feel like I want to say under, but I feel like every time I do this, I'm always proven wrong. So I'm going to continue to do it. I'm going under. I think they're going to struggle, but I've been so wrong about this organization forever. I think everybody has, but maybe this is the year it changes. Keyshawn, Tampa Bay. 
Yeah, I've been wrong about the Rays for a long time now. Um, obviously, they, they added Ahmed Rosario, and he becomes, like, a 300 hitter all of a sudden. Like, Fucking they just have that knack. Doesn't like, make the any Patriots sense. do, like, the Spurs do, or, like, the Miami Heat do, where they'll just take a bum and make him, you know, yeah. what he once was. They'll turn back the clock, or, or they'll take a guy that is pretty much unproven and make him into a formidable – um, Jose Siri, uh, they got Harold Ramirez, I think, still or not. I'm not sure. Um, they just they, Yandy Diaz. They have guys. I I like McClenahan. Um, they always find a way. So I'll I'll go with over. I think this is a lot where Ann said with just history. Yep. And I think this applies with me and taking over under. I'll take the over due to the history. Okay. Fair enough. Anthony, over under on uh, the Tampa Bay Rays. I'm going to take under going uh, 82 to 83 wins for them. Shane like McClanahan's going to miss the whole season because of Tommy John surgery. No glass oh, yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, their rotations, Eflin, Savali, Lidl, Bradley, and Pepiat. Uh, I mean, obviously the race. They'll all win there. the Cy Young in some way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The race will sprinkle that little magic <laughs> on them, and, and they'll all be really good. Uh, they lost uh, Manuel Magro as well, and, you know, the player that we can't talk about on here that was supposed to be a star for them. You know, he's not, he's never coming back again. So like they, I think they, I think they're going to struggle a little bit this year, but you know, that division is not great to begin with. So they may get a few extra wins. Mm -hmm. Um, Jimbo 84 and a half on the race. Yeah. Um, they are one of those teams where I don't know how they're going to win 89 games, but they are. You know what I mean? Like they're the race, they're the race. I, I you look at I, every year. I look at their roster and I'm like, how is this team gonna figure out how to win 89 games this year? And I mean, so one guy we don't talk about is Shane Boz. They, they do have them in their rotation. Uh, Zach Eflin pitched like a man possessed. Even last Savali, year with the Rays. Well, even yeah. Savali. Yeah, I just feel like they get their organization is so good. They get the absolute best out of everybody that comes in their organization. And this is one of those weird years. Where they have a lot of returning guys on that team. Yeah. You know, Jose Siri's coming back, Aurora Zarena's coming back, Paredes is coming back, Yandy Diaz is coming back. You know what I mean? So I feel like that team has had the time to gel. They're adding some young guys. Um in in, you know, they have a guy that needs to prove it in Ahmed Rosario. Um, Johnny DeLuca is one prospect that I really like. Um, yeah, that's that's gonna come up through that system. Um, so yeah, I I think they figure it out, even though on paper it doesn't really look great. Um, I think they once again do what the race do. Yeah, well, pretty much as expected. Ladies and gentlemen, the returning World Series champions, Texas Rangers, 89 and a half. I actually have them under. I have them under by one game. I think they're going to be tied with the Mariners at like 88 wins. I think the Astros get closer to like the 95 to 100 range. I think it's going to be a bloodbath, but I think the Astros are the best top to bottom. I think the Texas Rangers are going to have an amazing out uh, off se uh, excuse me offensive season, but I think that rotation is going to hold them back with the injuries they have in the age. I'm going under, not by much. Your thoughts, Keyshawn, on Texas Rangers? Under, and I'm going to say by a lot. I think they'll still be a playoff team, but I think under by about like four or five games. I think okay. it'll be like an 85, 86 win team. Um, and they'll sneak through the playoffs because I just – they had so much going well for them last year. Um, they were able to to recover from DeGrom. Obviously, sure, it doesn't matter, but they were able to recover from, like, Evaldi going down, at, you know, at points in the season. Like, and he pitched well, especially um, Montgomery pitching so well for them. He's not on the team. He's not on that team anymore. I thought they would get Hader to at least help the bullpen. They didn't. Um yeah, man, they, they had so many good offensive outputs from that lineup, too. I think that matters. I just think that they're going to regress just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's where we see the, the Mariners kind of take some of those wins away. Mm -hmm. um, but all in all, uh, yeah, I think all three of these teams will make the playoffs. So Texas, I, I'll take the under. Before we go to these two beautiful gentlemen, we have to get our fifth member on the panel up. And she has a very quick sentiment on the Texas Rangers. And there it is. Uh, <laughs> Anthony, your thoughts on the Texas Rangers, 89 and a half. Yeah, I said it earlier. I think Seattle overtakes them. I love the rotation for Seattle. Uh, you look at what 
uh, Texas has here of all the Haney, Gray, and Dunning. And then you're hoping that Jacob DeGrom, Max Scherzer, and now Tyler Miley comes back yeah. right. and somewhere during the summer. And where are you going to put all these starting pitchers? That That's my thing. Like, it, it, like who, after pitching for almost a full season, who gets taken out of the rotation? Like, hey. I, that's, the, that's the issue. I, oh. I think that, that sets a little tone for them falling apart here. And, and these guys are another year older. Right, Scherzer and Degrom, another year older. Like I, I don't see them getting the production that like what kind of we got, and that was yeah. like barely minimum. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, Jimbo, Texas Rangers, yeah. World Series champs. It's really just a question if they hit like they did last year. Which I mean, can you predict them just absolutely just bashing every single team that they run into again? Mm-hmm. Um, I think the offense, you know, is going to regress. Um, I don't know if they produce at the levels that they did. You know, it'd be crazy if they did because it was extremely fun to watch. I was, you know, defending champion. Um, but yeah, I mean, if they hit enough for the pitching not to matter, maybe they can win, you know, 87, 88 games. But I don't think they do that. I think they're more of a mid 80s win team. Um, I just think they take a step back. I agree. I agree. I, I think their bullpen was shaky to begin with. Um, mm-hmm. And I think they just got hot, really. I, I don't want to sound like a Ranger hater, but I, I just think they they're off. At, Corey Seager is incredible, but he has a sports hernia injury. You know, he's starting the year with a sports hernia injury. Uh, you know, we hear a lot about why Langford. He may not start the year with them. But he's an incredible, it, it, you know, Nate Lowe's not going to be ready, healthy, you know. So I, I, I definitely see a little slight regression. I just think the I think it's the Astros and Mariners show. I, I really feel that way. Um, Next team, uh, the the. The team I like to hate on for no apparent reason. I just love to hate on this team. The Toronto Blue Jays, the the, the Toronto Mets, the Vogelback Blue Jays, uh, the Eduardo Escobar, orange and blue, or red and blue for that matter. I am just going to say under because I have laid my neck out on the line from shitting on them just for pure hatred. I just think they think they're something they're not. I really think that they have it in their minds. They're like a whole nother level above everybody. And, you know, going from Shohei Otani, Juan Soto, uh, Cody Bellinger to uh, Kevin Kiermaier, Vogelback, Eduardo Escobar. I mean, I don't, I, I, honestly, they're hilarious to me. They're, they're genuinely the funniest team in baseball. And there's a whole bunch of jokes around, about them already. You know, God bless them. Daniel Vogelback hitting a few home runs. He probably ended Garrett Cole. So thank you for that, you know, but I'm going under. They are a good team, but I don't think they're going to be that good personally. Keyshawn, Toronto Blue Jays. It's such a pretender. like The biggest nobody, pretender. Nobody's taking, like, Vladimir Guerrero seriously. <laughs> like, I, I, he's a good player, but, like, bro, like, <laughs> like where, where he should have been and where he is now is, yeah. like, two totally different things. I mean, he got the cover of the video game. God knows why. Congratulations. I, I, I saw Jazz Prism do the same thing. For yeah. Whatever, yeah. For whatever why. reason he got the cover. Right? But yeah. Um, yeah, Toronto, man, like, I, they have so many, like, guys that I just think that, like, are still surviving off of their reputation on their team. Um, I love Gaussman, though. I think he's going to have a great year again. He's um, hurt. Oh, he's hurt, right. He's fucking hurt. He's, see, but that's the thing, right? Like, they don't have enough to survive injury. Yep, I agree. And that's the biggest problem with that team. And if you want to compete with those other teams in that division, you have to, like, continuously revamp, reinvent yourself. And they tried to do that at the trade deadline when their closer got hurt, and it just never materialized. Mm-hmm. And Manoa, I mean, he he he's probably the big, one of the biggest disappointments in the league because of, you know, what has happened since he got his deal. So, yeah. Uh, and the Toronto Blue Jays, my friend. Yeah, Manoa is a good representation of the team entirely, right? Like yeah. pretender. Yeah. Basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that you guys wanted Yario Rodriguez yeah. for the bullpen. Unfortunately, he he went up north. I'll say this. Blue Jay fans enjoy the swinging from Daniel Vogel back now because he ain't <laughs> swinging during the season. That's for sure. You, yeah. You're going to see a lot of swing, a lot of watching from uh, Daniel Vogelback. It's like almost like as if he's sitting on the couch with you watching the game. Yeah. And eating. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I have them uh, under uh, 84, 85 wins. That sounds about right. They still got talent on there, but it's just 
I don't see them like uh, like they don't have a difference maker. You know no. what I'm saying? Like that's the problem. Mighty should have been that. Yeah, and they 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 have guys that in their head think they are. Let me stop. It. Let me shut up. <laughs> Jimbo, the Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah, it's just you expected Vladimir Guerrero to continue just being a guy that you thought was going to be like a perennial MVP last year, and he wasn't. Um, he wasn't. You know what I mean? It's, it's one of those things where it's like they thought that they had a bunch of guys that were things that they're showing that they're not. I hope they are. I really liked watching the Blue Jays when all those guys are playing at a high level. Um, I think I really like watching Bo Bichette play. I liked watching Vlad Guerrero play when he was good, but I yeah. mean, we didn't see that last year. Um, but yeah, a lot of young guys, so I'm willing to give them a little grace. That rotation is, I don't pretenders, even like guys like Jose Barrios. I just don't think they just like, over they he over, was talking about as an ace, yeah. yeah they're just a lot, a lot of just guys that I just don't think they are as good as the Blue Jays think they are. Um, so yeah, I just think they're gonna underperform whatever we think, but the talent is there to be a playoff team. So I think they overachieved, okay. honestly, personally. I mean. Mm -hmm. I sound like a true hater, but I guess I am because I just mm. I just don't see it. I, I don't know. I I think I think the, the the Orioles are light years ahead of them. For them to even think they're in the realm yeah. of the, the Orioles is, yeah. is just hilarious. But gentlemen, two and a half hours later, we made it to our last team. <laughs> we can now go about our day because Lord have mercy. There's still 243 people watching this show. So shout out to you motherfuckers. Love oh, you all. Yeah. The Washington Nationals. Uh, <laughs> it's the last team. This is the last team? It's the Damn. last team. It's like we made it, guys. 66 and a half. Oh, I think they're going to go over. I'm going. I'm hammering the over on the Nationals. I don't uh, know why. I just think they are going to. I think they're slowly improving. I'm going the over. Anthony, 66 and a half on the Nets. Agreed. Over probably seven, uh, 68 six to 70 wins for me. And I mean, we saw how good some of their prospects yeah. look. They got a they got a good future ahead of them. And I, I will say this. They're going to give the Mets fits like yep. Joey Manessis always does. CJ Abrams, uh, CJ yeah. Abrams, Lane oh, Thomas the and uh, the immortal Jesse Winker oh. is now in the National League. East. So he's a Met killer and he will be torturing us all season long. Absolutely. Yeah. Keyshawn, Nats, Nats, 66 yeah. and a half. I'm going to say over, but like, I'm glad this is happening to them because yeah. it's, it's going to get really good for them in the future. I really do think so because I think um, they just have a really nice thing that they're building in the farm um, right now. But I'll say over. They're going to give us fits like they always do every year to Ann's point. Um, it's always that guy that's just going to hit lights out against us like CJ Abrams. Um, so yeah, I'll go over. And Jimbo, last prediction of the show, my brother, 66 and a half over under for the Washington Nationals. Yeah, I'm saying under. Um, and it's strictly because I have a I have a long-term bet with a buddy of mine who's a Nationals fan that they oh. wouldn't win 130 games between last year and this year. Uh <laughs> they, you they gotta, gotta keep before. the agendas flowing, baby. Keep gotta, the agendas I, 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 flowing. I, I, yeah, I, I, I gotta, I gotta stand strong on my agenda. So for that reason, I'm have to go under. Um, they do have a lot of exciting stuff going on in this roster. I will say, um, not a good team, but um, a team that you know you're like, okay, like you know you're, you're starting to see what you have there. Um, but yeah, they also just could sell at the deadline. Guys like Lane Thomas, you know, guys that I think a lot of teams are gonna want, and then they could just down, like just absolutely fall off a cliff. Mm -hmm. uh, so under ladies and gentlemen yeah. we made it i had no idea this was gonna go so long i <laughs> genuinely am thankful for all of us to be here today thank yes. you anthony for joining us thank you jimbo late thank add on you, my yes. brother appreciate you yes. um sure. shout out to the 243 244 that's been with us for like a good two hours honestly that is shay and son's record honestly um we really appreciate you uh, we're going to be doing lives this week. We're getting back onto the grind. Um, so if you want to check us out, just find us on Twitter. Find us on YouTube. You know where to find us, the way you found us today. Send this to a friend. Send it to a Met fan. We're going to be talking all Mets this week. Please give a like, a subscribe, and a follow to our resident uncle, Anthony nice. Rivera of Subway to Shay. My man, my brother, really do appreciate you saying yes to joining us. We love fucking working with you, brother. Can't wait to meet you, hang out with you, share a beer, my brother. I look forward to it. As usual, Jimbo, my guy. 
I love the intro from Jimbo Jr. We definitely welcome <laughs> Jimbo Jr. a lot more. Um, shout out to our cat lover. Shout out to Susie, our fifth member of the panel, um, who just made her business to be the fifth member of her panel. She was incredible <laughs> today. Shout out the Astros. Um, shout out the Mets. We were all positive on the Mets. I heard that like it's not okay not to be. be positive on the Mets, and we all were. So I don't know how that happened. Shout out to my man Rube the Pope. And ladies and gentlemen, please look outside. It's a blue sky. Go Dude. outside. Take Dude. a walk. You know what I'm saying? Go enjoy the weather. Don't worry about the internet. And yeah, go enjoy yourself. Thank you again. And please subscribe to Subway yes. to Shea Podcast and the Shea and Sons Podcast. Thank you all for joining us. We are out.